Um, okay, so um, so welcome everyone um, to the uh, fall 2021 planning meeting. And um, I'm Matt Primes. I, it occurred to me that for the for the whole FPA meeting a couple of weeks ago, I never actually introduced myself. I, I guess nobody nobody said who the heck are you. So I, I guess I'm flattered, but. Let me be a little bit more formal and say I'm Matt Franzek, and and, um, and I work at the Mitre Corporation. And along with my colleague and more importantly friend uh, Matthias Steiner from the National Center for Atmospheric Research, we are the current co-leads of the Friends and Partners in Aviation Weather. Um, we traditionally do a planning meeting. Um, well, our Matthias and Matt's tradition has been to do a couple of planning meetings a year. I think when Bruce was at the helm, it was a single planning meeting for the year. We've we've been kind of uh, uh, locked for the last several years into a cadence of of uh, uh, doing this a, a couple of times per year. Normally, uh, when we meet in person, we would we would at the same time um, meet and have our planning meeting for the for the, at least the following meeting. And then with the virtual meetings, we've been doing them a week or two after the FPA plenary meeting has concluded. And so that's why this meeting is a couple of weeks after our um, last FPA meeting. So um, so what what we're going to what we're going to try to do here is to get ourselves squared away for the spring 22 uh, spring 2022 FPA plenary meeting, and if we can manage it, as much of the fall of 2022 FPA plenary meeting um, as we can. Um, sorry, I was going to get the big hammer out here and, and, and mute somebody, but somebody muted themselves, so that was good. Uh, so, um, so without any further ado, I'm going to dive into these slides, and um, and uh, hopefully I'll go through the first ten or so slides fairly quickly, and then uh, we will start rolling up our sleeves and getting into the planning part in the last four slides. So the 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 question is, where are we? What what do, what do we have going on? Well, as you uh, who are diehards will recall um, that that there are there are guidelines or or <laughs> habits that we've uh, we've formed um, for doing our our um, FPA meetings, and I just want to review these fairly quickly. Um, so, from a timing and location perspective. Uh, the spring 2022 FPA meeting, um, like all that I can recall, previous spring FPA meetings will, in all likelihood, take place in the Washington, D.C. area, either at uh, NTSB, uh, at their auditorium, which they have made available to us for many, many years now and for which we are grateful. Uh, Possibly at at my employer's location in uh, in uh, the McLean Tyson's Corner area. That's the the Mitre um, uh, campus. Uh, Mark Faniff, who I see uh, is on the call, uh, did offer up um, graciously within the last six months or so the Alpa uh, facility in Tyson's Corner, and possibly there are some others uh, that that that. Uh, would be willing to host these this uh, hundred or so folks that uh, are are likely to show up in person at 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 one of our meetings. Um, so in any event, all that is to say, we're looking for the spring meeting to happen in the D.C. area and probably sometime in one of those four weeks that I have listed there and. Um, you may wonder, well, why those four weeks? Well, there was um, th there was uh, a, a, an effort made to avoid other standing meetings or events that are going on in the area, um, or in the aviation arena, or in the D.C. area at that time. So the NASA has a, 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 a an aviation um, meeting scheduled for the first week in March, the Cherry Blossom Festival, which can make um, hotel accommodations and travel so difficult as happening from the 20th of March through the 17th of April. 
AUVSI is happening the last week of April and the Vertical Flight Society Forum uh, the week uh, of, I think, the 7th or 8th, whichever days those are, 9th maybe of May. So, uh, so those four weeks have kind of risen to the top to avoid all those other things in there. Uh, let, let me well, no, let me not stop there. Let me keep on going, and then and then we'll start discussing specifics as we get further into the deck. Um, the fall twenty twenty two FPA meeting, um, uh, as you all recall, we we traditionally for many, many years were uh, hosted by the NBAA at their business and aviation convention and exposition. A couple of years ago, we uh, we went separate ways and then COVID happened. So we actually haven't had a, if, if I'm remembering this correctly now, we haven't had a fall meeting in person um, outside of of the NBAA, uh, but we had we had good intentions uh, several times, and I think we 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 talked about Boulder at one point in time uh, at at Matias's facility at NCAR. Uh, Heather Reeves from the National Severe Storms Lab uh, offered up um, um, a facility in Norman, and in fact, I did check back with Heather uh, yesterday and confirmed that that she and they are still thinking in terms of hosting us this coming fall uh, in Norman in the October or November-ish time frame. And that is, again, assuming that we are having an in-person uh, plus virtual meeting as opposed to uh, a virtual only uh, meeting. And and the dates, you know, are, are very much open um, uh, uh, for the fall meeting, uh, but but as we have kind of done here for the spring meeting, we'd be trying to avoid major events, uh, including, and he's not on, so I can poke fun at him, I guess, including Randy Bass's uh, North Carolina fishing trip uh, in, in late October, early November, whenever the heck that takes place. Uh, so, um, so, so that's that's what we have going on there. As far as meeting formats are concerned, everybody should, uh, I think, be aware that when we have an in-person uh, meeting or an in-person plus virtual, as as we're calling it now, it's typically done in two consecutive days, full eight-hour days, uh, from eight o'clock in the morning until five o'clock in the evening local time, wherever we are. Um, typically, the the planning meeting has has been uh, occupying the first half of the first day, and then that's followed by a one and one half day plenary meeting. Um, and each of those days, divided up into into halves or four ish hours, uh, is sort of important, as you'll see in a subsequent bullet point. On the virtual only meetings, we've settled in on four half days. Uh, the plenary meeting has been consisting of three consecutive half days, and then uh, uh, following the plenary meeting by one or two weeks, uh, there is a, a single half-day planning meeting uh, uh, like we are doing today. And typically, they run four to five hours per half day, and we try to, uh, in, 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 you know, to avoid um, 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 Zoom and Teams uh, uh, exhaustion. We try to schedule, you know, uh, a lunch break in there somewhere with some reasonable break, reasonable breaks between. Um, I don't have, we, we don't have any breaks scheduled for today in part because I'm not sure how the day is going to go. And my sense is that it could be a fairly, sh relatively speaking, short meeting, but typically that's a kiss of death every time I, I speculate that. So we'll see how this goes. Um, and and for those who uh, perhaps are new or uh, or unfamiliar, uh, the FPA website uh, URL is listed uh, down at the very bottom of this slide. Um, and uh, if you are not yet registered uh, on the FPA website, we certainly encourage you to do so. It, it comes at no cost other than receiving an occasional email from us announcing events or topics of, of interest. Any questions there from anybody before I uh, before I march on? And thank you, Mark Fana, for um, uh, for for uh, verifying that that you guys are still uh, um, willing to host us, and uh, we we do appreciate that. Uh, and by the way, I, I have uh, em employed uh, my uh, MITRE colleague Brian Pettigrew to uh, watch the, uh, the the chat room. So. Uh, uh, Brian, if you see something that 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 uh, that we're missing, uh, please do jump in and uh, 
and give me a shout. I'm on it. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, so that's sort of the, the the general information. I want to take you back now to next to sorry to last spring, two weeks after the spring plenary meeting when we held um, a planning meeting. Matthias, alas, was not with us. He was in an RV in the mountains of New Mexico somewhere and could not uh, join us on that day. But we did we did talk about um, uh, a a spring agenda that looked like this. Um, and and so uh, uh, one topic was um, very generically low altitude weather, but we had a lot of input from a lot of different folks. Uh, Marilyn Pearson had some input. My colleague Claudia McKnight uh, made some input. Um, uh, Ralph Stoffler and Don Birchoff wanted to bring their uh, ASTM F-38 um, uh, information to bear. And uh, Bryce Ford at that time uh, was still involved in the um, in the aircraft-based observation field very actively, and and so so there are a lot of folks who said, "Yay, verily, let's let's have a session on this. Let's dive more deeply uh, into it than than maybe we do in in some other uh, fora." And and so uh, that was kind of primary topic number one, um, and then second uh, secondary topic, not necessarily for that day, but just one of the secondary or shorter topics um, that that uh, that we would have would be. Um, an ongoing FPOD topics review led by Tom Ryan, who has been for the last couple of FPOs, save for our TEM uh, just concluded, been, been very successfully doing this. Thank you, Tom, for your, your inputs there. Another topic that seemed to gain um, a, a fair amount of interest was one that was, again, generically titled Next Gen Weather Status Update, uh, Lee Jang and, and Bill Bauman. Uh, and to a teeny tiny extent, Don Birchoff, which is why his name is in such small font there, uh, all, all expressed an interest in uh, contributing uh, or, or putting together a session uh, about, about that. And, and um, in looking back through the notes um, of what you know, Lee and Bill and others were interested in, it was, it was basically to, to, to go back and, and look and see what kind of progress, if any, we have made in the area of uh, ATM weather integration, of translating weather information, of, uh, of the need for uh, things like that. And it might also include um, uh, an update on um, several larger uh, projects that the FAA has had uh, in the works for some time now, and and uh, and I'm specifically thinking as I'm saying that about the next gen weather processor and common support services weather, the the processing and dissemination uh, capabilities that FAA has been working on now uh, for quite some time. Um, on the on the um, uh, secondary or or perhaps smaller. Uh, topic and, and again, not necessarily set for this day. This was this was a, a fairly arbitrary order. Um, we had a discussion that took place during uh, the spring planning meeting, involving among others um, Gary Picodner, uh, Dan Fuca, and Nancy Mendonca from NASA on 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 the the role of weather in both enhancing aviation efficiency and as a at least a byproduct of that reducing carbon emissions and um uh, so so this was a, a, a um, th this was not something that i think we had tons and tons and tons of input on but as we were talking last spring th this one seemed to actually garner a fair amount of interest and and Gary, I see you're online. We'll come back to you here in just a, a little bit and 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 kind of uh, kind of go over this where we are and if if you if you still think that there's a there there, but but for the moment, just uh, just just hang tight. Um, and then then the third topic um, that um, uh, we landed on was um, a space launch and recovery or landing uh, weather concerns. Matthias had actually submitted this um, this topic to the FPA website as one potentially of interest. Ralph Stoffler, who I believe is on the call, also uh, expressed some uh, some interest in in talking about this a little bit. And so we we put this in the in the uh, the a primary slot, so a a larger three hour slot. 
uh, with then um, Matthias and I doing um, our FPAW organizational updates as, as the secondary one. Um, so, so hold your comments for just a little bit. Uh, we will come back to this, but I wanted to refresh everybody's memory. That's where we ended up last spring. And where we also ended up last spring was in this sort of quandary of we're either going to do this or we're going to do this Federal Aviation Weather 10. And we'll do the Federal Aviation Weather 10 if we can meet in person. But if we can't meet in person, we'll probably do this. Well, we didn't meet in person, but we still decided to do the Federal Aviation Weather 10 because we didn't feel like we could kick it down, kick that can down the road any further. So, so we, we have this agenda pre-built um, and, and um, you know, we, we could perhaps, when we get to this point in the discussion, say, let's just stick this in the spring and, and run with it since it was good enough for us last spring. Or we can say when, when we get to it, now nah, let's not do topic number three primary because we actually talked a fair amount about this in the TEM and there's, there's really not much more that we can add to this to this topic. So, uh, so again, just, just keep that in your head as we're going forward here. Um, oh, and now in the subsequently, and I, I should have actually made one more strikeout, I think, but I didn't want to assume. Uh, Janet Ford and Jim Hazeman from the Capital Group DC. Um, Janet emailed me this morning to advise that based on the work that they have been allocated and are likely to be doing in the spring timeframe, they're not going to have um, a, a, a role to play in this area. So with regrets, she has uh, uh, removed herself and Jim Hazeman from, um, you know, the FPA activities for the spring and possibly into the future until such time as they get some, some work back in this area. I, I did mention in passing that Bryce Ford is, uh, is no longer with, um, dang it, I can't remember who he was with before, but uh, he's, he's no longer working for them, is, is in retirement mode right now and basically said, I'm probably not a good name to have up in there. So, so in so many words, what this means for, uh, for Ralph, for uh, Don Birchoff, who uh, is not on the call, so therefore we can assign him stuff. Uh, Marilyn, who's not on the call yet, but is planning to join as soon as she can. Uh, possibly even my, my MITRE colleague, uh, Claudia McKnight. You know, we, we've got some names, but, but some of the names that we had in there originally um, may no longer be applicable. Matt, Tom Ryan, did I go? Uh, sorry, uh, so uh, Tom, is that you? Yes, sir. Can you go hear ahead? Me? So yeah. on that uh, first section that you're talking about, um, I'd like to throw somebody else under the bus, and that's Gordy Rother. Um, <laughs> we uh, we are working hard at standards for low altitude weather, and working with these folks that you have listed. So I think that uh, the flight standards, uh, putting aside Janet and Jim for a second, um, would be a good fit in that topic. Over. Yep, yep. I, I hear you uh, loud and clear, Tom. Hang on to that thought, please, because when we get down to the bottom end of this deck and start actually writing stuff down, uh, you know, I'm going to take Janet and Jim's name out, probably take Bryce's name out, and that, that'll be our opportunity to insert some other names in here. Um, this next slide is is um, something that that primarily Matthias, a little bit of input from me, put together um, a couple of may, maybe one or two planning meetings ago, just to say, you know, here here's a list of things that FPA either has looked at or or arguably should or could look at going forward. It's 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 there mostly for um, you know for just uh, um, getting the juices flowing a little bit in your head. So on the emerging modes, we've got the unmanned aerial systems, we've got advanced air mobility, we've got the supersonic flight, we have the high altitude, uh, a long endurance uh, stratospheric operations, we've got the commercial space piece. Um, on, on the weather forecast side, you know, we have the question of how does this fit into, for instance, trajectory based operations, which the FAA is working very hard to to head toward in the not too distant future. How, how do weather forecasts affect flight planning? You know, how, what about optimization? Um, how, how do we characterize uncertainty in weather forecasts? I, I, a topic that I think that 
we as FPAR, we've explored before, but it's, there's certainly plenty there for us to still to, to still talk about and 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 look at, uh, you know, how how to best leverage the fact that every forecast that is issued is probabilistic in in some way, shape, or form or another, whether it's explicitly or implicitly uh, available. The probability that is. Um, under under uh, integration, you know, again, there's decision making under uncertainty. There's the human factor side. We had a we had a, just a, an, a in my view a, an amazingly interesting session three or four F pause ago um, where we had some human factors folks that that came in and talked to us about uh, about this area and, and I just I just found the whole discussion fascinating. Maybe it's time to to, to return to that and uh, and and explore it further. Um, data standardization, C notes. I have no idea what the notes said at the time. Matthias, do you have any idea what they said? <laughs> okay. No, I don't uh, remember. Yeah, under weather obs, you know, we've had some some great great briefings from Walter uh, Combs and Gordy and 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 uh, and. And at all on the uh, on the visual weather observation system, um, we know that there's a significant need to to have more better um, uh, surface weather observations in support of these emerging modes of transportation. Um, uh, augmentation of surface observations, either uh, either through um, automation or uh, human augmentation. Um, it would probably be good to hear at some point in this area from uh, the folks in the uh, FAA's um, uh, Aviation Weather Division and or the Aviation Weather uh, Group within the PMO, the, pro the uh, pro Program Management Organization, on the state of the, the, the new present weather sensor that is going to be um, implemented into our automated surface weather observation systems. There's some, some neat stuff, I believe, uh, that's coming along with that. Um, uh, a question uh, that, that came up at, le at least implicitly multiple times during the time a couple of weeks ago, the notion about uh, about either mandating or 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 taking at least taking advantage of the fact that more and more aircraft can and hopefully will have uh, sensors on board to provide um, in in situ atmospheric observations, the use of visualization and and um, and and in, in making data and that information come to life. And one of my colleagues um, uh, sent me a YouTube video. Of a, of a a small company that's been working on uh, augmented and extended reality with respect to uh, weather forecasts, and there's some really, uh, really interesting um, ways of looking at weather. Uh, weather in the cockpit, we have the uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 dawn of weather in the cockpit. Mr. Gary Picodner on the call. Uh, there's always a lot of interest in 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 this piece, and there's so much uh, connectivity between that and uh, multiple other uh, weather topics like um, uh, uh, pie reps and uh, and the and the training aspects and and uh, electronic flight bags and 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 again more and more opportunities for um, uh, the the aircraft to serve as a, a source of weather information in addition to um, to to operating in the the atmosphere itself. It could also um, be a remote cockpit. Uh, and then there is the question of a remote cockpit, and how does that work? And and how does a a remote pilot uh, provide information or or get information and 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 consider it as uh, as they are operating um, aircraft beyond visual line of sight? Um, the climate change piece we talked about that a little bit. Um, uh, Matthias, I was uh, at. I was just I was just fascinated with the slide that you showed at the uh, weather COI meeting several weeks ago that that you know speculated about about you know some uh, certain airports that are per, are particularly at sea level and near the sea you know what what might happen to them in the coming years if the sea level change that is anticipated actually takes place um uh, and then, and you know, any other additional patterns that 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 we are able to discern with respect to 
you know, will there be more storms? Will they be more intense? Will there be more turbulence? I know Paul Williams from uh, the, the UK, the University of Reading, has done a lot of research in this area, and, and, and there's, some, there's some interesting thoughts going on there. And then there's general updates on, you know, R&D from the labs, R&D from industry R, um, uh, what, what's academia working on. Uh, this second bullet point here, I don't think we could foot stomp that loudly enough. You know, the, the policy and procedure drives so much of the decision making that we make with both in the weather community and with regards to weather that that, uh, you know, we, we need to keep up with it. And 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 Gordy, uh, uh, our bus rolled friend, Gordy Rother, uh, usually keeps us um, uh, on the up and up when uh, uh, w with what's going on on the flight standard side. Uh, so, so th these are just to get the get your get your your thinking on this going and um, and and think about these the spring 2022 FPA meeting. Um, so, the the agenda that I showed you the tentative agenda uh, was based on uh, submissions in part on submissions to the FPA website, and so I I have not repeated those submissions here. However, there were two other submissions that, that did not make their way onto that tentative agenda. And I wanted to at least give the folks who, who, uh, who put them on here a chance to talk about them. And if they're not here, I'll do my very best. So, and, and I, don't, I don't believe Tom Fahey is here. Um, so uh, I, if you recall, a couple of meetings ago, we had um, a, a short session on the 5G interference issues and, and, and uh, spectrum issues with respect to, um, to weather products. And at the time, uh, Tom said, you know, we could do a, a, an expanded session on this and it would be, if it happened in the fall of 21, it would be very, from a timing perspective, very useful because there's some things that he as a lobbyist knows are coming up for discussion in Congress and, and you know, we could, we could, we could get the, the right people in here to talk about this. Well, at the end of the day, we didn't do it. So it's out there still, still as a, um, as an idea from Tom. Matthias, you want to, you want to just uh, talk a, a few seconds about, sorry about that, about uh, the, the, the next one that's down here, the next phase of precipitation. Uh, well, there is uh, research going on. Scott Landolt really would have to talk that about this more intelligently than me. But there are, uh, you know, challenges related to the automated measurement of mixed phase precipitation and what is being reported, etc. And that has implications in in terms of uh, decision making in on the wintry conditions, which obviously would also dovetail into some other winter weather topics that we have on the list coming up in the next few slides. And I think I want to just leave it at this uh, level here for the moment. Very good. OK, so uh, subsequent to the, uh, the the spring meeting, we have had a handful of other suggestions uh, come in, uh, the, the longest of which by far and away was uh, this one submitted by Joe Vickers a little over a month ago. I believe Joe is on the call. Yes, I see him in the list here. So rather than me try to just read the words that are here without fully understanding them, let me just hand the microphone over to Joe so he can talk about what he had in mind when he made the submission. Sure thing. Can you hear me okay? Five by five. All right. Sounds great. So um, <clears throat> so there's a uh, uh, NTSB recommendations and cast recommendations to the FAA on uh, as a result of runway excursions to develop a, uh, a capability to use the data off of aircraft to measure braking action. Um, so uh, the the term that the Transport Canada has come up with is an aircraft braking action report as opposed to a pilot braking action report. The aircraft braking action report is based on a standard recently passed by ASTM or published by ASTM. There's two standards actually listed in this uh, uh, on this page. The first one was <clears throat> done in 2019, and that was just to get an industry consensus around the terminology. Here's an example. The term mu, measured friction, is, uh, is interpreted 
by different organizations differently. Uh, there were slight differences in the way Airbus and Boeing uh, defined MU. So we needed to get first a harmonization uh, and ASTM came up with that harmonization working with the same the same uh, group that brought us TALPA. It was a society of aircraft performance and operating engineers. Their next task was, okay, if now that we've agreed on the terminology, if you wanted to actually use data from an airplane uh, to calculate uh, uh, braking action, what are the how should that be done and how do you how do you validate that it's accurate? So a, that's the result of AS, the, the ASCM uh, standard that was passed late 2020. So the the purpose here is to talk about um, how we can uh, if, if, if this group would like to discuss it, uh, how to operationalize and proceduralize what Transport Canada is proposing in, a, in an advisory circular that they've got out for comment right now on, on how braking action as reported by pilots and braking action reported by airplanes can work together to give a, a better picture for the next pilot who's going to land on that runway on what to expect. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Does that is it sufficiently describe it? Sorry, I was a good lad and muted myself and then couldn't <laughs> find the mute button. Uh, yeah, that, that's great, Joe. Thank you. And um, um, I, I believe there are some folks on the FAA side of the house who would be, uh, who are in all likelihood very involved in this, but but there may be others who would like to you know, get an update and 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 hear how this is uh, evolving um, in in Canada and and elsewhere. Um, I, I'll just I'll just off the cuff <laughs> say that that this doesn't feel to me like it's a a full three hour session, but it could be either a component of a three hour session or it could be one of these shorter, you know, uh, one ish hour or less standalone session. How, how does that? How does that sit with you, Joe, when I, when I say it that way? So I, I, I'm going to call it one of my skill sets is if if you need it, if you only had 30 minutes, I can I condense it to 30 minutes. If you want me to talk about something for three hours, I can fill that up, too. <laughs> Reminds me of somebody I know. Uh, <laughs> I, OK, I got good. Perfect. OK, so yeah, so, so the way I would propose to do it is is um. Uh, in a perfect world, you know, I think an hour would be would be ideal because what I would do is I would describe, in essence, the state of the industry, um, the state of the describe how how um, uh, the, these technologies would work. There's only two companies that do this: my company, AST, and, and Airbus has a, has a mechanism for doing it. But we would uh, then have Zoltan go into the um, our chief scientist, Zoltan Rado. He would go into the um, the validation process where where uh, we would demonstrate you know here's the standard here's its requirements and here's how here's how our approach is to meet those requirements. Now there's, there's really no one else out there to, to talk about that, but we would describe it and uh, get you guys uh, familiar and comfortable with 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 our methodology and approach. Okay. Very good. So, so that would be. Uh, I would talk for 10, 15 minutes. Zoltan would talk for about a half hour, and then some time for questions and answers. But we can condense it. We can stretch it out. Whatever you guys want. Okay. And 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 Joe, you've I I, I think been at at some of our um, meetings in the not too distant past. And and uh, although we don't always succeed at this, we we do all possible to avoid death by PowerPoint and have conversation even in a in a virtual format. So. You know, as long as we can, as long as we can uh, can can go along with that mantra, I think I think this could fit very nicely as either a portion of a, a larger session uh, or or a a one hour standalone by itself. Sure, perfect. And and um, uh, Joe, I I saw that uh, that Debbie Koval, Koval bleh, I should be able to say this. She's a she's a fellow Polish person. Debbie Kowalewski has. Just uh, uh, put a question in chat or a comment. Um, where she, Debbie, you want to just just verbalize it rather than me butcher your name again? Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, Joe. I'm just also wondering about the impact of the U.S. NOTAM system. My understanding, those FICONs um, and the U.S. NOTAMs, all of them will 
eventually, um, my understanding somewhat soon, are, we're supposed to be um, converting to the ICAO format. So just wondering if, if uh, you know, how the breaking action is going to be presented then will be changing as well. Do you, do you have any information on that? Uh, so I, I, I have opinions on that, Debbie. Uh, nice to hear your voice again. Um, so, you know, the FICONs are, 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 are great. Uh, the, the problem with the FICON, though, is they, they do tend to get stale. Um, I, 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 they just do, do weather's dynamic. The braking action is much more dynamic than FICONs and the ability of airports to maintain the FICONs. And um, so what we're, we're, we're seeing is uh, how do you present the information of a, of a braking action report as quickly, well, accurately, uh, with the uh, with the appropriate level of precision and accuracy, how do you get that to to the uh, aircraft on approach as, as quickly as possible? So the way the way I see that working, the way we've we've managed our network and and uh, Airbus's solution is very similar. Uh, when the airplane lands, we pu- we collect the data off the plane. A message comes. No, we don't. The aircraft uh, gathers information, sensor information, and an ACARS message is sent to us um, through the airline's data center, and we calculate the the um, the forces affecting deceleration, isolate the braking action, and we report that out. And then we would report that out to you as a dispatcher, and we would also have the uh, reported to the airline to forward to uh, uh, whatever cockpits they would like that information to go to. We'd also have a way for the for the um, uh, pilots flying uh, flying in route to be able to query the system and say, "Geez, I might be landing in. I might divert to Milwaukee. I wonder what the braking action is there." And uh, we would be we would provide the last two hours of braking action reports that we have in our system uh, in Milwaukee. So I, I think we'd provide a much more. It's not a perfect tactical solution, but it's uh, it's 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 certainly much more tactical than strategic. Uh, Ficons being more of a uh, strategic. Um, approach. Does that help answer that? It does. Yeah, thank you. Matt, do you want to take a note underneath on this slide that maybe we could also have a discussion on the use of that information from an airport perspective or from an aircraft pilot perspective, etc.? Because that way we could put it in a broader context. Perfect. Y'all can see how lousy I type. It's like doing math in public. <laughs> you know, I'm old enough and, and done this often enough that I, I just don't care anymore. I, you know, it, it is what it is. All right. Uh, so um, we also had uh, three other newly submitted topics. Um, oh, he's not here. Rats. Um, Joel Siegel, just a, a, a week ago, um, submitted a, a topic titled, uh, roughly, Translating Weather Information for Both Crewed and Uncrewed Operations. He is here on the call. Joel says he's oh, here. Joel's here. Oh, oh, well, then, then, sorry, I missed him. I missed you, Joel. Um, l- let me hand the baton over to you, and why don't you, uh, why, why don't you fill in the, the blanks here for us? Sure. Thanks, Matt. Um, So I actually came across this when I was falling asleep a couple of weeks ago. Um, Mm -hmm. Actually, not even. Um, I was browsing through Facebook as everybody, well, anybody silly does before bed. And I noticed that Flying Magazine had posted a um, an article and it was called. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, The Weather Conundrum, and it was an article published on October 11th by Michael Wilds, and it said, let's discuss why pilots may not use weather reports as well as they should and what can be done to change it. And I thought to myself, that's an interesting topic right there. And it kind of 
really does very well in terms of correlating with the earlier topic you mentioned, Matt, about the communication of forecast uncertainty. Um, as, as David Chorney can attest to, I've, um, I go around, I, I get invited to places and I give presentations on aviation weather. How can you go out and give yourself the best weather briefing that you can? And one of the biggest things that I always tell everybody is never, ever, ever wait until you're in the air to look at the weather because you're never going to have as good of the weather information as you've got here on the ground. And one of the biggest pieces of feedback I get from the people after I give those kinds of presentations is I didn't know that that's what that meant. And I think to myself, what is it that that we're doing wrong? And I have to remind myself, the majority of us on here are meteorologists. We've been so head down in aviation weather for years and years and years, some of us decades and decades, that we forget <laughs> that we forget <laughs> what it's like to look at this with brand new eyes. When we see a surface analysis, we can read that and it shows all kinds of fun information for us. Prime example, skew T diagram was just posted out, I believe in the uh, most recent AOPA publication. Um, they gave uh, let's go to school and learn how to read a skew T. And one of my flight instructor friends looks at me and says, what information do you really get from a skew T diagram? I said, let me count the ways. You know, it's like as a meteorologist, we get used to all of this. Pilots don't. And yet we're about to enter. Well, not we're about to. We're entering into a new world of urban air mobility where we're going to have a bunch of people operating these vehicles, at least to start off with piloted wise. Um, then we're going to go into an automation system where we're going to have new quote unquote dispatchers pretty much that are going to be operating these vehicles from a central dispatch center. Uh, we've got UTM that's going into the world of USSs and SDSPs. And are we doing anything to enhance our translation for operations? And I I'm sure Don Birchoff would, you know, sit there if, if, if he's on the call. I, I looked earlier and didn't see him. Um, but anybody who communicates with the public has faced this issue. How do you translate a weather forecast into an operational mentality for your pilots? When can you tell them don't fly here? Is it your job? No, it's not our job to sit there and tell them not to fly. It's our job to say there's going to be thunderstorms here. They're going to be bad thunderstorms. You may not want to fly here. Um, I had a pilot give an example. Hurricane Sandy many years ago. Pepsi was coming back into New York. Pilot calls me up, says, when's Sandy going to hit? I said, about maybe six hours after you guys land. He says, perfect. So we'll have time to put the airplane in the hangar. I said, why would you put a multi-million dollar airplane in the path of a superstorm? And he says, oh, that's a really good point. We're going to go to Buffalo instead. And, and it's like, but that's a prime example of this is, is pilots need that kind of translation of, yes, here's the weather, but here's what it means to you. You're about to put your multi-million dollar airplane in the path of quite possibly and what ended up being one of the worst disasters for the Northeast in decades. And you saved that because of that translation aspect of this. And so again, how does how do we sit here and improve on manned aviation and yet at the same time make these good kind of level of effort enhancements to also apply to UAS and UAM as they're coming down the, the pike here? So that's my idea. Excellent. Thank you, Joel. And sorry, uh, I, I missed you. I just, uh, the, the list on my view stopped at Tom Ryan and you were the next person down. <laughs> All good, Matt. So, All uh, anyhow, uh, thanks, Joel. And I see a lot of similarities, you know, when we start talking about next gen weather or how do we handle uncertainty? How do we how do we translate weather and impact? There's certainly a lot of commonality in what you're look, talking about here. And I think what 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 some of the other folks were thinking about when we met last spring. So, you know, maybe it's an incorporation of this aspect into um, a larger um, a, a larger session. So thank you, sir. Um, two other. Um, hey, Matt, Marilyn's got her hand up. Right. Oh, thank you. Yes, Marilyn. Hi. Um, hi. Hi, Joel. And Joel, you couldn't have put it better. I'm not a meteorologist. Probably everyone else is or has uh, some background. I come from the operational on pilot. So I was the author of AC 9192, the pre-flight. AC that came out 
almost a year ago, not quite, and worked uh, at the FAA for eight years, my final eight years in unmanned. So everything you said is quite appropriate. There are means for crewed aircraft to have weather, and there are plenty of means for the uncrewed, although the low level is, is a bit uh, remiss in, in what it provides. Um, we try to educate, and I say that because the most failed area on any written test from private pilot, uh, remote pilot all the way up to ATP is the weather section. And in fact, you could conceivably fail every weather question and still get at least the 70% passing. I say this over and over again. So it's important to understand as we have these new pilots coming into EV toll, V toll, AAM, UAM, uh, whatever the acronym you want to use is. But as we see them now, um, landing on potentially vertiports that are on top of buildings or suspended off the side of buildings. I think um, weather is, is pretty critical, the environmental aspects, and I think that's exactly what you're talking about. Very good, and glad to see you, Marilyn, uh, because otherwise I was going to assign you all kinds of stuff. Now you can defend yourself a little bit. Uh, you can still assign me all kinds of stuff. I know, I know. I, I, I was confident I could. Um, all right. Um, I'm I'm here. Uh, I'll share I'll share your uh, your thoughts. <laughs> You're muted, Matt. Yep. It's only the 12th time today, so I've still got 12 more to go. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you, Marilyn. I was talking away to you and uh, nobody heard me. Um, the, the last two items that were su uh, newly submitted were from uh, Wayne Fry in late June and Ismail Gultepe in, uh, in, in May uh, at around the same time as the, um, uh, the planning meeting, if I remember correctly. Uh, Wayne's is is um, about uh, uh, you know helicopter and and uh, rural oper or operations of of uh, of of, sign uh, of important type aircraft in rural Mississippi where there are very few uh, FAA approved weather sources. I, I think it actually probably fits in very nicely with with what we had as topic number one in our um, in our tentative spring agenda. And then from Ismail, who I've just had some some uh, some email conversations with, he's a, a researcher, researcher up in um, uh, up in uh, not Transport Canada, but uh, gosh, what's the Met arm of Canada called? I can't think of its official name. I think name. it's Environment Canada. Environment Canada. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, precisely. Uh, who uh, who specializes in in the uh, the cold climate side, and so uh, he he had a couple of items that were of interest to him. One involving low visibility conditions of the Arctic, and another uh, UAS applications uh, in cold climates. Um, I, I've not heard back from Ismail since, um, so I, I've told you everything I know about uh, about that submission right there. Um, so, so let, let me go on to the task at hand, and then I'll call a timeout and, and see how we want to proceed. So, so today, before this meeting is over, we need to, oh, no, we don't need to, but I would sure like to, and I think Matthias would like to, uh, if possible, determine what our spring meeting dates are, and if possible, but we do have choices, determine what our location is. And and I would like to, but I open this up to the, the larger audience and, and my friend and colleague, Matias, I would like to assume that we're going to be in person and virtual, kind of what we did for this last FPA meeting, and then react as need to as, as circumstances evolve. Therefore, I would like to have a physical location set for us in the, in the spring meeting. Matias, is that, that, are we in sync on that? Correct. Okay. 
Um, and then I would like to have our spring 2022 agenda and session leads and key participants identified because folks, the fact is that once we do that in a couple of weeks, we will start meeting with them every other week to, to get our agenda shaped and make sure it's evolving in an appropriate manner. Um, which was what made the, the TEM as interesting as it was because we got a very late start on that and it was a very complicated uh, um, meeting that we had, but it seemed to go okay. Um, believing that there, it is possible that um, we already have a tentative location, I'd love to get some tentative dates set up for that. And since Randy is here to protect his fishing trip, uh, we could do so uh, without without stepping on it. Um, and and I have a sense that we may end up with more topics uh, that people want to want want FPA to talk about that than we can handle in the upcoming spring session. And if so, and if it makes sense to everybody, I'd love to park some of them in our fall session at least as a starting point. So, so that's that's what I would like to do with the remainder of this meeting. And if we can knock this out in an hour, I'd love to give you all about two and a half, three hours back. Um, but again, every time I every time I say that, it's the kiss of death, and we never quite never quite get to that early early departure time. So, but let me stop there, hand it over to Matthias for any of his comments, and then open it up to the floor for any comments about how to proceed here. I don't have much to add here, really. You covered uh, what I think we would like to achieve uh, with today's meeting. And uh, so take it back, Matt. OK, well, let me just open it up to the audience. Anybody have any any burning comments to add at this point in time, or do you want to just jump straight in? I will take silence, by the way, to mean jump straight in is your answer. The only question is if you want to make a short, take a short break, bathroom break or whatever before we get into it and spend another hour on this. And Mark Faniff has his hand up and I'll bet you it, it was something similar. Go ahead, Mark. I was going to say that <clears throat> the location for Alpa's office is not as easy to get to as MITRE and the NTSB. We are not on a metro stop. We're about a little less than a mile from a metro stop. So we should weigh that into our planning. We're happy to host. Um, we have a great facility, great meeting facilities, and a good cafeteria, but its accessibility is a little less uh, convenient than the other locations. I'll just throw that out there. How about parking, Matt? Uh, parking oh. is absolutely uh, not a problem. Uh, parking garage uh, that can hold hundreds of cars. Any shuttle services that go around through, through this area that could be utilized? There is a shuttle service that the building provides to and from the metro, but it's not a it's like a 16 passenger van type. And it runs like every 15 minutes. OK, thank you. OK, and Mark, that's that's great information. And I must confess that, you know, uh, I never looked on a map and I, I assumed, and you know what that does to you, that, oh yeah, we'll be able to hop right off the metro somewhere and just stroll into the Alpha facility. So thank you for setting me and perhaps others straight. And 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 thank you again for, for, for extending the offer. It's, it's, it's cool. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Um, uh, folks, uh, we've been going for, for just under an hour. Shall we take a bio break and maybe return at uh, at 1235 Eastern or, what, and whatever, or whatever that uh, translates to for you? Or do you want to take a longer break since it's around uh, lunchtime Eastern time, uh, get a bite to eat, and then come back a quarter till? You, you, you guys tell me.
I don't know. Short, how to interpret short break, this. Matt. Short break. Yeah, let's take a break. Okay. I heard short break, and I heard let's take a break. All right. Let's do. Uh, let's do a short break. Uh, I'm showing. Um, I'm showing uh, 27 past the hour. Let's let's try to return to 35 past the hour. So eight minutes from now, and we'll get going. Okay, I've got uh, 35 uh, past the hour, and a few more seconds on top of that. Uh, so um, let's uh, continue on. Um, again, we're going to try to get the spring meeting dates and locations and agenda set and uh, then do the best we can on the fall meeting at this juncture. So um, let's start with the, uh, the spring meeting dates. We've got basically four candidate weeks. Typically, we would, all other things being equal, for the in-person meeting, schedule it either a Tuesday, Wednesday, a Wednesday, Thursday, and stay away from as best we can the Monday or Friday side of things. Uh, we have the, the week of the 7th of March, 14th of March, 18th of April, and 2nd of May. Um, you can see the, the avoid um, activities down here in the in parentheses, and I would also point out that Easter um, is April the 17th. So it is just prior to the 18th of April. And Mother's Day is May 8th, which is the Sunday after, the Sunday at the end of this week. Those are the only holidays that I am aware of um, in that time frame. So I'll stop there and, and look for input. And by the way, we're very informal. You can you can just unmute and, and give input or give input in chat, however you want to do this. Pretend that we're all in the same room together and behave like you were in that room. Matt, Tom Ryan here. Uh, yes, since, sir, Tom. Thank you, sir. Since the uh, fall of 2022 will be October or November, uh, according to one of your slides, I think we should probably just back it up six months, so April or May. I, I, I agree with that. I'm, 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 I'm down with that. And, and for me personally, as far as any of the dates that you've listed there, I'm good. Let's, let's use, uh, let, let's do a little bit of group voting and use the hand raise feature. Um, <laughs> Matthias, let's use the hand raise feature and um, 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 and 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 by the way, I, I don't want to. If 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 folks have a strong desire to have the meeting in March, um, make yourselves known now. I frankly agree with Tom Ryan that a six month split from an October November is, in fact, an April May. And, and that we probably ought to look at those last two weeks that are listed here. So um, I would propose that we do a hand raise to show preference between the 18, the week of the 18th of April and the week of the 2nd of May. So um, so do all, does everybody know in Teams how to raise their hand? There's a little icon in the upper border. No, you can't vote twice. Stop that. Uh, there's in the upper border. There's a uh, there's a little smiley face with a hand raised. If you press that, that that's where you can uh, that's where you can either raise your hand or add the little emoticons to your to your messages. So um, let's 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 do it this way. And then and then when we're when we're done counting, you you have to lower your hands, which is <laughs> which is always a challenge. So um, how many people would prefer to have this uh, spring meeting on the week of the 18th of April? So it looks like, how many, Matthias? Eight, I see. Eight. Okay, so would you all kindly lower your hands and not vote twice, Joel? <laughs> I 
Hey, y'all did really good. <laughs> All right. Now, I can make an assumption that everybody else is going to vote for the week of 02 May, but that would be a bad assumption. How many people would like it the week of 02 May? See, but I, the reason I was asking about voting twice is because I really don't care one way or the other. So that's why I was going to vote twice. <laughs> well, that that's well, well, you know, a in this case, a a a vote twice is the same as a, a don't vote at all. It, it has the it has the same weight, right? <laughs> the, those those who have a strong preference for 18th, uh, the week of the April the 18th. And there were eight. And then those who had a preference for the week of the 2nd of May, I think I saw five, something like this. One more at one point, but then was retracted. So, yeah, it's <laughs> five or six. OK, well, what I'm what I'm hearing is that that there's a, a slight preference for the week of the 18th of April. So um, so on that note, I'm going to. Do this. And now let's just spend a couple of minutes talking about is is there for ah, for for folks, you know, individual schedules, is there a preference of Tuesday, Wednesday or Wednesday, Thursday for the in for an in person meeting? Is is there is it like, you know, I'd love to join you, but if you have this meeting on Tuesday, forget about it because I, I can I can never do anything on a Tuesday. Since you said we're sitting in the living room talking, Wednesday, Thursday is my preference. OK, I oppose that. I would go for Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> I'll bet you got more weight than I do here, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny brings a good point <clears throat> for those who would be traveling that Monday, this <clears throat> the Monday after Easter. Colleen, I think you have your hand up or either you're voting or you have your hand up to talk. Um, is I don't think my hand is still up, but I would since I have the floor, I will vote for Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> well, let's do it. Let's do it the same way then. Let, let's just uh, let's just do a, a hands raised again and say on the week of the 18th of April, and I believe the 18th is a Monday, if, if I remember the way I did this correctly. Um, how many would vote for Tuesday, Wednesday, the 19th and 20th of April? Raise your hands. And I see eight on my screen. Is that what you see, Matthias? Okay, everybody lower your hands. That means you too, Matt. You would think I would know how to lower my hand by now. I Put love your hand again. OK, and how many would vote for uh, uh, what am I? Wednesday, Thursday, um, the 20th and 21st. Raise your hands. All right. Going once, going twice. Sold. Okie dokie, let's go to location. I'll tell you what, I'm going to fire this mouse. Um, you heard Mark Faniff talk about the pros and cons of the uh, Alpha facility in, in Tyson's. Um, 
The, the NTSB facility, which we've used for years and years and years, is a, a, a great place to have this meeting with one exception, and that is that unless things have changed, and, and I've not been uh, told that they have changed, there is not any native virtual meeting capabilities within the NTSB auditorium. And um, Brian, do you, do you have a question before I continue on? Nope, just left my hand up. I apologize. Okay, very well. <laughs> um, there, are, there are not uh, native virtual meeting capabilities in the auditorium. They can be purchased, but since our uh, since the uh, the FPA budget is precisely zero, makes it a little hard. I know uh, Jim McClay, if you're still on, I remember we had a conversation not not too too long ago between uh, you and I and and Tom George. I think about you know about things that that could be done, and and this might be an area if for some reason you know, NTSB was absolutely what, what people wanted to do, but I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to, to go that path unless there's some reason that, that we really, really want to use the NTSB facility. And, and let me just say, uh, and, and I am prejudiced, uh, I admit it, but let me just say that I believe that for the number of folks that we would have uh, at the spring meeting that MITRE has at least three, maybe four or five rooms, all of which have native uh, virtual meeting capabilities and and the, the MITRE facility itself is literally within an easy walk of the McLean Metro stop on the Silver Line in McLean. I, I'm, I, am, I am very confident that I can get a room at MITRE that will work, but I don't want to. I don't want to sound like I'm I'm promoting MITRE because I'm a MITRE person, but I think I can. So um, comments on that. Well, Matt, do you want to check on the calendar at MITRE to see if indeed that time frame would be open while people are thinking about what they want to chime in here? Um, <laughs> it's going to it's going to require me to do something that I'm not sure I know how to do <laughs> yet on the fly. <laughs> OK, in, in our in our calendaring system, I guess what I am saying in so many words is that I, I believe that it, it will not be a problem six months ahead of time. And that's what we're talking about now is six months ahead of time. I, I believe that I can find a 100 plus person room between in, in the next, at the, at the end of the day today, if we say MITRE, I will find a room. And if I can't, I'm gonna to go to Mark Faneth with my hat in my hand and say, can we, can we use your facility? So my recommendation is that we try to schedule it at MITRE. Anybody have any uh, any any comments to the contrary? Randy, you're lit up. I am. Oh, you were. You, you may have just been unmuted. I did not mean to be, but uh, um, MITRE is fine with me, and uh, basically any of those dates also work. So. Okay. And uh, and Jenny, the um, the. The, the, the March weeks kind of got, uh, uh, to your question on chat, the March weeks kind of got um, uh, set aside based on uh, the comment that um, a, a, a true six month uh, cadence with a, a October, November, fall meetings would have us in April or May, not as early as March. That's why. Okay. Any, anybody have any objections to me just making this miter red? Going once, going twice. All right, I'm going to sign miter up for the site for the spring meeting. By the way, uh, uh, <laughs> I should qualify this. I should have said this right up front. Brian, you need to you need to remind me of important stuff like this. In order to enter a MITRE facility, you must be vaccinated. 
I don't want to. I don't want to know what anybody's status is. I'm just saying that if you're going to plan to come to the meeting in person, you're going to have to present proof of vaccination. I, I was getting ready to say something to you. Um. <laughs> yep. And again, I, I don't know if that if that changes <laughs> changes things for anybody. I hope it doesn't. But um, but that that's j just our current our current status right now. How does that work with booster shots, et cetera? I have no clue. And this past Monday, uh, we had our, our weekly meeting with the CEO and that question came up and he said, I don't know either. Let's worry about the more immediate future and not about what's gonna happen in next months with regards to boosters. And as we said earlier, we are targeting this as an in-person with a virtual option as a starting point and if necessary, we may go all virtual. Yes, that would be the plan. And if we went all virtual, instead of it being Tuesday, Wednesday, it would be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in these shorter four or five hour sessions. Okay, very well. Let's go to the hard stuff now. This was, again, the agenda that we had uh, when we left the last spring planning meeting. Um, I have removed um, Janet Ford and Jim Hazeman, and I'm going to unilaterally, based on his conversation with me, remove Bryce Ford from this session. But I guess at this point, we now need to know if this is the agenda that we want to uh, present uh, next spring on April the whatever those dates are, 20th and 19th and 20th, I guess it is. I would like to motion that the uh, weather concerns for space launch and landing, essentially the upper class year space and stuff like this, that we take this off because we talked about, uh, about this on the TIM and it sounded like there was enough information shared at that point. I'm not sure how much more we would want to add there for having a separate major discussion there, unless we want to really get into the upper class airspace, stratospheric weather predictions and stuff like that. But that is just a motion here from my side. Yeah, and, and uh, again, just to remind everybody, th this ended up on the list uh, last year with Matthias's name on it because it was his uh, his topic submission. But at the time, he was in the New Mexico mountains in an RV and, and couldn't defend himself. Ralph Stoffler, however, was at that meeting. And if 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 my notes are correct, and I'm not imagining this, he he kind of, with some reluctance, said, yeah, I can help out Matthias on this area. Ralph, do you have any 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 reaction to what Matthias is proposing? Well, you know, um, I think we're seeing that with the amount of space tourism that's going on, um, this is becoming an increasingly more important topic. Uh, and I know that uh, from my government days, uh, a lot of the um, you know companies like SpaceX and whatever are actually just relying on whatever the government puts out. So, you know, I think this is an important area that we need to address, um, in particular when we're talking space weather, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, in the National Weather Service definition, weather and space weather fall into the same category. So I'd really like to see this topic uh, to continue. Any, any, re uh, any, any rebuttal? I feel like uh, I, I feel like I'm, you know, the TV moderator on a presidential debate. Don't call each other names. Now. <laughs> I see uh, Dave Kochevar has his hand up, Matt. Yes, Dave. Yeah, go, uh, thank you, Brian. Go ahead. Yeah, Dave. yeah. Thanks, Brian and Matt. Um, I think I think it's a good point. The the one thought I, I I do have is that we there already is a large annual space weather conference in Boulder um, every every spring that has quite a bit more expertise from the space weather community that I think would be a better avenue for that kind of discussion. Um, you know, cause we, we just don't have that kind of expertise in this group, in my opinion, based on what I've seen at that space weather conference. 
Yeah, and Matthias, when when you when you put together this this topic, and I'm doing this from memory, so I may be maybe not remembering correctly. My recollection is that your focus was on terrestrial weather concerns for launch and landing. Ralph has brought up the space weather piece, which which you know I agree it's a it's a very important piece. But uh, but you know we sometimes we conflate those two and 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 you know I, I, I don't again I, I just I just bring that up as an observation. Well, uh, I Go ahead. Yeah, I just, and I heard the comments on the Space Weather Conference in Boulder. I've attended that uh, many, many times. Uh, and uh, there's a big difference between what I would call operational impacts and doing the heavy lifting science stuff. Uh, you know, the Boulder guys are very focused on the science. Uh, you know, here we're focused on the operational entities. You, you've got to fly through the air and then potentially get out in the space. So even if we don't get involved in this now, I think sooner or later we really need to. Good point. Thank you, Randy Bass. You're next. Yeah, well, one I agree with Dave that uh, if, if you're talking, you know, truly space weather, it's probably beyond um, you know, our expertise, and and the uh, uh, the space weather workshop covers that. Um, if you're talking, you know, terrestrial, I, I guess my question would be, you know, what are we trying to get out of this? You know, what's what's the purpose and and what's the goal? And I, uh, you know, and and to some extent, what's the problem that we're looking for or, or talking about? And I don't, I'm not necessarily sure what that would be. Not saying that it's not an issue. I mean, it is. It is there, but I just don't know what our goal would be in discussing it at, at an FPAW session. And that's where I was coming from in terms of motioning to take that off. Not that it's not important, but we had at the fall meeting the Tim, we talked about things and it sounded like, you know, people understand what they need to do and how to go about it and that every launch is unique and has to be evaluated very specifically based on the customer's criteria. And so I, I uh, echo your sentiments, Randy. Okay. Um. So if we were to to uh, to slide this into the um, the bullpen, uh, as you can tell, I, I was watching a baseball game last night, and, and our, our bullpen was a little leaky. If you were to slide this into the bullpen, uh, uh, does anyone have any uh, any uh, ideas on what we would should put in its place? Don't all, don't all holler at once here now. Well, Tom Ryan again. Um, I have been part of discussions on this whole 5G thing. Not that I truly know anything about it, but it is, I believe, becoming quite a big deal. Quite a big deal. So that might be a good topic for us. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with Tom. That's a big deal in Alpa's mind as well. Um, but I was going to also add that earlier, I agree in one a second what Joel and Marilyn said about a pilot's perspective on weather. And if we're going to take something off the table, I would jump on with Joel to help prepare for that topic. Um, it's been an issue in many pilot labor unions, and I'm sure from the dispatch side that Debbie would say that pilots, even in the 121 world, are very untrained when it comes to today's weather environment and what they receive for weather training. 
So I, I don't have anything in mind to help Joel out yet, but I know that's a big issue and I would jump on that bandwagon uh, from an ALPA perspective. Um, Joel, do you want to, um, do, do you feel up to, uh, to you know, organizing a session around um, uh, uh, understanding the impact, the the impact of weather, and and all of the kind of you know things that might go along with it, the training aspect of things, the translation from raw weather into uh, into impact, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yes, I do, and I don't see her online anymore. But Colleen and I were texting during that as well, and I um, I was going to enlist her help if it was chosen. So, well, I see her online, Colleen. What do you say? Maybe my list is a little old. Heck, who knows? Well, so sorry, so, I was just away for a second, but I heard my name. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Just say yes. That sounds dangerous, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well. <laughs> no, Colleen, we were. Um, I was asked if um, if I would be willing to take the translation of weather information to pilots, impacts of weather training, et cetera. If I would take that on, and I said that you and I had talked, and I wanted to enlist your help on that as well. Sure, I'd be happy to help. And it looks like uh, Marilyn just typed in the chat that she may be willing to help as well from a pilot perspective, which I think would be a great angle. Perfect. Okay, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm going to um, um, put in uh, in here uh, some words which are meant to describe <laughs> what it is that this session will be doing, understanding that these may not be the final words, but just to just to get this ball rolling for us. So I'm going to say something like uh, uh, translation of oops, other into him or pilots and dispatchers, um, and and I'm I'm. I have I have um, taken the liberty of adding the dispatchers to this list because as many of you who are familiar with dispatchers know the same problems that pilots have when when they are uh, you know be becoming a an ATP with respect to weather is is very similar to what a dispatcher goes through and I would I would say without without firm evidence but other than my having been around the block a couple of times my gut feelings that of all the things that a dispatcher has to use, um, that uh, has to do that, that that knowing how to work the weather piece is perhaps the most difficult hurdle for them to get over. At least that that was my experience, which is why, as a meteorologist transitioning to a dispatcher, it was probably a lot easier for me than it was for a lot of other folks that became dispatchers. Debbie Kovalevsky, are you still with us, or did you drop? Oh, you're still here. Would you would you be able to help? Um, would you be able to help Joel and and um, and and Mark and um, and and the whole gang that's that's signed up for this right now? Sure. All right. So let me let me let me start capturing names. Joel Siegel, Mark Fanis. And while you're typing, uh, is this meant to cover? any type of aviation flight operations or are we focused more on low altitude remote pilots uh, just curious i was kind of putting it out there for for both for pretty much anybody who's interacting with a pilot in any kind of operation i think that in the experience that i've I've had, and it's very similar to what Matt had. I went from being a meteorologist and having that background into being launched into dispatch. Um, I think that a lot of things are pretty similar in terms of being able to translate. It's just depending on who your audience is. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting as I'm as I'm thinking here about this topic and the various areas it could go. It, it could turn into a, you know, a, it, it could turn into wanting. Um, 
more than just the four hours that it's allocated very, very easily, I would think. And and um, especially if we start talking about the training piece, this reminds me in many ways of a session we had several years ago where we had a bunch, a bunch of folks from Embry-Riddle uh, at, at the FPA meeting talking about, you know, some of the, the, the training. And I think, Gary, Gary, you may have actually organized that session now that I think about it, but uh, there was a lot of, you know, what, what does the pilot do with the information that we're giving to them and, and how do they interpret it and how well is it translated, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, certainly ripe for lots and lots of discussion at the 121 level, at the unmanned level, at the GA level. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's applicable across the board. And, and so your challenge, Joel and Mark and Debbie and Marilyn and Colleen, will be to, to, to you know, to focus this down to a, a um, you know, a, a session that fits in that four-hour block and, and does not subject us to death by PowerPoint. Otherwise, it's, 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 it's all open. Challenge accepted. <laughs> all right. Now, um, I don't. I don't, uh, Matthias. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to figure out a way, and I can see why this was a mistake. What I did, I'm going to have to figure out a way to recapture your original submission on on um, um, commercial or on space launch and recovery weather, and and integrate into it Ralph's, I think, very pertinent comments about. The operational impacts of of not only terrestrial but space weather on that operation too, because there's there's a there there, and I don't want to lose it. So please, please, uh, Ralph and Matthias, keep me honest on that. When I put these notes back together, I need to I need to put your piece in and add kind of Ralph's spin to it also, so, so that we don't lose that. that. There's also a comment by Lieutenant Colonel, uh, Colonel Williams that uh, you know with. Uh, hypersonics and other things at the higher altitude the army is you know engaged in that and so there would be room for for discussions of that upper airspace uh, and and what is needed to support those kinds of operations so i think that could certainly be something to put on for future reference how does this sit with you guys uh, this was something that uh, dave kochevar suggested to to keep it to keep it generalized and i guess in order to make sh <sighs> i have the world's most sensitive mouse Does that still work okay? And that way we don't just, I, I, because I was wondering about how do we fit air traffic control into this? Because they have the same sort of issue or tra or maybe more appropriately traffic managers have the same sort of issue of translation of weather into, into impacts. It, it, it's, it's basically, <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it right there. I see, say Matt, to, if, if you want to go real technical on that, from my understanding, at least with, with TMU, they've at least got the CWSU people whose sole responsibility it is to translate that, right? Y yes, that's that's true at, you know, at a center. And, and if the decision maker at the Trey Connor Tower elects to pick up the phone and talk to the CWSU, then, then true for them also. Um, but we, we, let's let's not let, let's not um, let's not beat this to death yet. This will be for us in our in our biweekly sessions to start to start you know beating to death and 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 make sure we have this characterized properly. Okay. Well, well, good. Um, I, I'm 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 glad we uh, we we got that squared away. Uh, Gary Picodner, who uh, um, I, I don't know if you're still here or not, Gary, I, um, I don't have that list up right at the moment, has has emailed and said that he's going to have to drop soon, but he's good with this uh, topic remaining uh, here. Uh, although he he did he did a caveat that by saying that that he, he his expectation is that Dan Fuca and Nancy Bendanza will also uh, contribute, and it won't just be the Gary Picodner show. And and I get that. So we will have to uh, Gary reach back out to 
to uh, Dan and Nancy, both of whom, by the way, I, I emailed last night as I was pushing this out to say, you're getting this because you you were an identified session lead or participant at the previous meeting, and there's likelihood that it's going to come up again. So I, I hope they are both aware and just couldn't make it for, for scheduling reasons. And if not, Gary, we'll have to decide, uh, we'll have to find you some other co-conspirators to go with that. Speaking of which, uh, among the the group of uh, you know, of twenty or so people that we have here right now, are there any others who uh, who for whom this particular topic resonates enough to to possibly uh, 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 put their put their hand up and say, "I'll help Gary out with this session." Gary's a reasonably likable guy. Um, Matt, let me reach out. I've got a, a colleague over here on the Booz Allen side who's doing a lot with um, specifically aviation efficiency and um, that kind of role. Let me see if he'd be interested. Okay. Well, I can give you a hand here too. I mean, um, you know, within our company, College Aerospace in particular, we're doing a lot of work in that area. Okay. So, um, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put down then a. A, a TBD and Joel Siegel reach out and a TBD and a Ralph. I, you know, Ralph, I don't, that's funny. You, you said our company and Collins in the same breath and I had to think for a minute and then and realized, oh yeah, that's right. Collins is now a, a, a Raytheon subsidiary, isn't it? That's right, Raytheon, Collins, and Pat and Whitney were one happy family. <laughs> you were good until the last part. And not that I know anything at all, but I've been involved in mergers and acquisitions, so. <laughs> okay. So so this is a, this is a, 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 booze, a booze Allen reach out, and this is a Collins reach out. That'd be great because because I, I frankly don't know if either Dan or Nancy uh, is able to or even still interested in and and Gary's not here to defend himself so uh, th this will be good I can tell Gary you're you're still on and if Dan and Nancy are out we're trying to line up um, some folks who can help you out with this so stay tuned okay uh, Lee I see you're, you're on the oops Randy you have your hand up go ahead sir all right this. That, this may be controversial and people may go, what are you thinking or why, why would you say that? But that uh, topic, you know, obviously has a lot of, of uh, viewership, I guess, or, or you know, a lot of uh, uh, notice among others beyond just us, including the, you know, federal government and you know public and everybody else if we did this right it could conceivably be something where we could get um you know a newspaper article or something out of it such as you know inviting somebody from the capital weather game to to attend um, because i think i think they would they would like to see this you know i could see this becoming a, an article in their um posting on on what you know the the weather community and the aviation weather community in particular is trying to do for you know reducing carbon emissions and things like that so again just a thought but uh just wanted to throw that out there now given what you just said randy would it be making sense to make this a primary topic rather than a secondary, which is having a less time, you know, slotted for? So, to me, it could be a primary topic, but I'll leave that up to others. Too. Um. I'm 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 trying to think back to the spring when when this first came up and we were having conversation about it. There was, um, there there was, um, uh, you know, a, a fair amount of energy around that conversation, if I remember correctly. But I I 
I just don't at this point recall it rising to what I perceive of as as the level of, hey, this this is enough to stand on its own and and pull a a session by itself. Which is not to say that it isn't. I'm I'm just I'm just trying to recall how this how this actually came up or or, or evolved in in the spring. Um, what about and, and this is just um, thinking out loud here, so be careful. But what about what about we try a short session, kind of like what we did with the 5G and Spectrum session, and then we say, "Hey, there was a, just a lot of energy and interest in this. I think we should. I think we should continue this conversation either at the next F pause, a full session, or the one after that, or something like that." I'm, I'm fine with that. And and Randy, that, that doesn't mean that you know that that w what you you know what you proposed for this meeting sh shouldn't you know couldn't shouldn't happen it's it's just um I, I would hate to i would hate to to you know sign gary and dan and nancy up for a full session if what they believe they volunteered for six months ago was a one-hour session uh -huh. <laughs> Well, let's see how we shape it as we go along, whether that really has enough meat to to increase its, uh, its size on the agenda. Yep, yep, yep. I agree. Uh. Do you know somebody at the Capital Weather Gang, Randy? You know everybody. Yeah, I got a couple of contacts there. <laughs> yeah, they're they're a great group until they put your name in the Washington Post. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why that's why I keep them on my side. <laughs> okay. Um still there. Yes, you are. Lee Jang. <coughs> you had what I thought was a very important uh, session uh lined up for the fall if we were going to have it virtually and then we did the tem and now this all got pushed off um uh i i still think that it is <laughs> it is a worthy of a full you know a full three to four hours and 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 b the timeliness of this uh is is still valid what, what do you think lee uh i met the uh... <laughs> Macias, I actually missed the first 30 minutes of this meeting. Uh, have you guys talked about this before I joined? Was oh, yeah. here? oh, you didn't hear all the stuff we, we gave to you to do? <laughs> no, no. What we did in the first 30 minutes of the meeting, uh, Lee, was to basically go over, you know, what we do, how we do it, and what we did last spring and then subsequently how we evolved from you know the the the, the session that we thought we were going to have to the aviation weather technical exchange meeting and and basically pushed the agenda that that we had put together for the fall we we basically have pushed it now to the spring so the so the lead in here is is if if you are still willing and able and think that it's germane and pertinent, which I do, um, you know, would you be okay with with doing this session that you would plan to do this fall, doing it next spring? Yeah, of course. Yeah, <clears throat> I like it when you say of course. That, that that means I can I can do all kinds of other things. Yeah, okay. next spring is good, but. Also, I'm thinking about what Randy just uh, mentioned, the second secondary topic on this day. The next year aviation weather status, it could be long and could be brief, you know, in, in a sense that if there are not that much major, you know, milestone type of advancements, probably just some high level briefing will cover the topic. OK, but on the other hand, you know, a, re a reduction in uh, CO2, uh, you know, emission from the air airline industry. I think it's a uh, it's relevant to climate change. You know, it's a higher topic uh, area for the administration, basically. So, so Lee, certainly, I'm I'm sorry, Lee. I stepped on you. Go ahead. 
Uh, it's certainly, you know, if uh, if if both topics are important, you know, time wise, really, I don't think uh, next gen status update should take three, four hours, four hours, you know, probably a couple hours. They can cover the topic well. You know, well FA, Noah. Yeah, so, so Lee, uh, a couple of things. Um, mm -hmm. I I guess when um, when when we were putting this together in the spring, that I mean we called this next gen weather status update, which you know implies numeric uh, next gen weather processor and CSS weather and you know OPC and and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but my recollection is that that. You know, either in addition to that, or or maybe even um, alongside or instead of that, that we were going to revisit some of the very earliest notions of uh, of what next gen weather would involve, such as translation of weather into uh, mm -hmm. into into impact, and then the conversion of that impact into. I mean, I mean, sorry. Translation of weather into potential impact, and then the conversion of that potential impact into predicted impact based on adding traffic to the translated weather. And mm -hmm. and so 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 um, I, I for one would not want to lose that. Mm -hmm. If uh, I go ahead, yeah, I think those are all relevant. If you go back to the you know. Uh, catch up chart <laughs> years ago you know is uh, the wonder of course is over all these years has that vision been evolved or changed significantly okay or you know nowadays there are more like ai based people talk about ai based uh, technology used in different areas showing you know incorporate new thinkings into to revise or refine that vision uh, I mean, not right now. It's closer to 2025, right? <laughs> and uh, where we are, you know, in in terms of are we on track or are we kind of slightly diverted into a different approach, realizing the limitations. There are so many human factors. You can't easily automate all this process. Okay. Uh, also, relevant top topic three is is kind of weather translation. Uh, issue, you know, then when we talk about weather translation, are we talking about, you know, CWSU type of service to decision makers directly face to face or talking about tools, basically trans automatically translate all different factors, put them into context, make a uh, impact based decision. OK, so it could be very, very deep. It could be short, you know, I'm I'm thinking in leveraging you know in uh, consideration with other topics whether we have the material and whether we are uh, ready to go dive in depth at, at this particular meeting in spring or can be it can be shorter high level type but uh, you know maybe in the future can revisit this Right now, just the vision for me is not clear. It's just last few years, probably five years before, five years early, it's very clear. OK, but uh, last two to three years, not that clear, okay, at least to me, uh, where we're going, where we're making baby steps or, you know, we, we stick to the vision. OK. Yeah, you know, you're you're verbalizing uh, very eloquently, Lee, the, you know, the thoughts that go through my head about, you know, <laughs> And, and I would probably answer some of your questions with with uh, with, with um, uh, pr probably um, uh, in the negative that that you know we haven't made much progress in that area. And I think it's I think it would be valid to revisit and to ask: Is this still the right model, or is mm -hmm. there something else that we should be? doing since we really haven't made much progress in the way of the ketchup mustard chart paradigm and and integrating 
weather information into decision support tools and decision support systems in a meaningful way. Well, uh, so if, if you're, uh, let, let's, do, let's do it this way, Lee. Uh, I, I hear you loud and clear saying, I'm not sure that, th that this topic should be the primary or should be the secondary, or maybe it's two primaries. Maybe it's two hours a piece or something like that for, for the, the two topics that I have, I have listed here as topic one, topic two, but I really mean day one, day two mm -hmm. uh, kind of stuff. Actually, session one, session two is what I should say. Come on. That's not what I want. Um, but if you're if you're still okay, Bill is not here, but I'm I'm actually fairly confident that he will still uh, sign up to help you. Don is not here, but there was just a little mini Don that was was here previously. Um, I, I know it's not it's not at all in my purview to do this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna volunteer uh, an AJM uh, 33 rep. To, to <laughs> okay. It would also be good to have a NOAA rep in there. Yeah. Well, so you know, I don't want to overtask myself, but I used to be a member of the FAA Next Gen Executive Weather Panel which consisted of myself, uh, uh, the FAA leadership, and of course, Louis Uccellini and the friends from the Navy. So if you need some help there, let me know. Okay. I, 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 wonder, I wonder if we could cajole Mr. Bradford into joining us for this conversation. And, and not as a presenter, just as a listener and commenter. No, I think it would be good for actually for him to present. I mean, he lives this stuff day in and out. He's doing a lot of things in this area. Uh, and I can tell you over the last couple of years, uh, a lot of things that we built, uh, you know, have changed pretty dramatically because either A, the technology wouldn't support it, or of course, sometimes uh, just the interagency coordination was problematic. So it would be really good to have uh, Brad um, give us a presentation of where all the stuff is at. I have very mixed feelings about that, but I, I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't. Uh, I'd, be a, I'd be a crappy poker player. What if we said, what if we said um, a, a noop representative without necessarily putting a name on it? Or in your opinion, Ralph, is 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 Steve Bradford the only name to put there? Well, no, a new representative would be good. Uh, um, and the problem is, uh, you know, Steve has got the most, uh, probably the most current stuff, because by the time this uh, meeting takes place, Louis will have moved on. Um, so, you know, he'd, he'd rather either send John Murphy to see what's happening. Uh, but the real key here is, and it's the reason I, I advocate for, for uh, Steve, is we want to know the FAA perspective. Uh, but yeah, a new representative would be good if you want to be politically neutral. Yep, I hear you. All right. Well, let's leave it there for now. And and again, we're going to have six months to to shape this into something. Let's. Um, I, I think we sort of know what the uh, uh, what 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 some of the issues are, what some of the interesting um, aspects of this might be. Um, Tom Ryan, you still good? With, if you're still here, are you still good with uh, with doing your normal thing? Ready, will, and enable. Let's just figure out the topics. Roger that, okay. Um, and then uh, Ralph and Marilyn, I think you two are the only uh, of the four names I have listed there, the only ones on the call. Um, uh, Matthias and I were, were uh, exchanging emails prior to the meeting and, and one, of the, uh, one of the comments made was, you know, 
we talked we, we talked about this a lot at the TEM. Do we need to do it again? And the response was something like, uh, "Hey, I think there's a lot of a lot of energy and a lot of excitement about diving much more deeply into this whole question of low altitude weather." Uh, and, and by the way, th this was a Bryce Ford ad right here, and I'm just not sure since Bryce is no longer involved that that's that that's going to be appropriate. So I'm going to, with respect, um, make it go away. Um, so 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 let me let me let me just turn this over to to Ralph and to Marilyn and hear your thoughts. Is is there enough of a there there to fill up a day? And and and, and do I not recall, um, Tom Ryan, that you voluntold Gordy Rother for this particular topic also? I oh. did that. I did that, and he shot me already. <laughs> yes, I did. So you know, from my perspective, this particular subject covers a lot. I mean. Yep. Uh, we got to we need to be able to talk about the current capabilities that we have, the policies that are out there, the gaps that we're trying to fill, uh, and uh, the changes in models, uh, and you know the role that the federal agencies are, are playing and not playing. So there's a lot we need to cover uh, because I'm not sure everybody's really aware of what's going on, and, and there's this uh, let's say everybody's on waiting for whoever's on first base to make a move, but people don't really understand who on first base is. So I, I think we can fill the day easily with this. I agree. Uh, I, and and it, was, it, it was, this title was given, was made purposely vague because I, I think that, that at the end of the day, we, you know, we are going to end up in the, in the prep process focusing and narrowing this down and adding words to this to, to more properly describe what it is we're going to talk about. This is kind of right now a boil the ocean title, and, and we're just not going to be able to boil the ocean in four hours or three hours. So so I, I agree 100 percent. But I guess, Ralph, is, is, is there enough of a there there to where people will want to hear us talking about this? I, I, my opinion is 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 strongly yes but you know i, I want to hear from you want to hear from marilyn any others that want to chime in so matt i think a couple of years ago when i was first introduced to fpa um i did a, a talk in las vegas about low altitude weather gaps for bv loss in the uas realm and i think it's even more relevant now uh, with the expansion of rules to allow more BV loss, uh, with even more small UAS operating in the airspace, and now with the anticipation of the entire EV toll, V toll, AAM community also sharing that low altitude airspace. So there are many areas, as Ralph said, what exists now, what's approved by um, what's approved weather, and is there a way to approve something other than the National Weather Service provided weather? And I think you know that Don is working with F-38, ASTM F-38, uh, we're all on that committee, uh, working toward a solution. So I think there's plenty of uh, subject areas, and we can narrow it down or we can leave it expansive but my only concern is that is that you know we fit this in whatever time bucket we have and and allow the opportunity to have conversation and and i, I just I, we could we could be so big and broad here that that you know we'd have 43 five minute presentations and and no time to talk about it. And I, I just, I just, I really don't want that to happen if we can avoid it. Hey, uh, probably don't worry about that. We got you covered. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. After, after 26 appearances in the Congress, I know all about letting other people talk. 
Good. All right. So, so let, let me let me call time out here just very briefly and say that I think we have talked about all three of the spring 2022 FPA meeting sessions. I think that we have kind of uh, we have topic areas that are likely to be um, to be to be refined in the coming weeks. We have. Uh, individuals who have said, yes, I would be willing to do this or to help with this, or we have people who have said, I can reach out to others. We have some folks in the case of the next gen weather status update to identify and engage, but I think amongst this group, we have enough, we know where enough of these bodies are buried to probably at least do a reach out and, and get some kind of an answer back. Um, Matthias, where I am right now, I'm 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 satisfied that we have a we have an agenda at this point, but but I'm easily satisfied. So let me hand it over to you and see what your reaction is. I I think this is uh, as good as it gets at this point, and it's then a matter of shaping the individual components as we you know progress towards the spring meeting. And just to recap. If we have that in person, then session one would really be a half day and session two would be a half day and session three would be a half day. So let's say session one would be the afternoon because in the morning would be the planning meeting part and session two would be the morning of the second day and session three would be the afternoon of the second day. Is That's that correct? That, that, that is understanding. And if we were to go virtual, then this would be three days you know, which we uh, would spread. That's correct. And, and that's why I had uh, whatever. Well, no, that, that, that's sorry, that, that's wrong, too. Yes, what, what you just said is exactly true. In a in a in a in person meeting, there's two of these sessions on one day and one of these sessions along with the half day planning meeting on the other day. And in the virtual meeting, this is a day one, day two, day three. And by the way, this order is completely arbitrary. The association of one primary, one secondary is completely arbitrary. And again, that'll be part of the flesh out process as we as we go through. Agreed. Let me let me open it up to the the uh, the 17 uh, diehards who are still here. Any any reactions, any comments, any any I hate this, I, uh, you know, <laughs> anything at this point. Hey Matt, it's Kevin. You you can add me to the the first one, the low altitude weather. Good. And Kevin, I was going to volunteer you, but I wasn't quite sure that I'd stay on your good side if I did that. <laughs> um. I'm uh, so, sorry to pick on somebody, but uh, Bruce Carmichael, any reactions from you? Or are you OK with this lineup as it's uh, presented, if you're still there? Yeah, I think uh, I think this could work out well. Um, hopefully it'll be an in-person meeting, which I think will make it a lot more entertaining than um, <laughs> for, uh, as a virtual meeting. Roger that. Good, thank you, Bruce. And uh, Lieutenant Colonel Williams, uh, how does this, from, from from the DOD's perspective, since you're the sole surviving DOD representative uh, currently on this call, if you're still there, how does this how does this sit with you? Hey, yeah, I'm still here. Um, yeah, it looks good to me. I don't uh, I don't have any major changes um, at this point. So not all not all relative to us, but uh, certainly a lot of it is, and we'll. We were either ready to go. Well, I hope I, I hope that that you know um, that that we can continue to have you know your engagement, your being either you personally or somebody from the DoD side who's watching these these sessions be shaped and and you know seeing where the um, where the logical intersections are, and then at at you know at at those sessions, if nothing else. That we can have some some uh, uh, some some not only representation but some some active participation by 
uh, by Air Force Weather and uh, the, the Navy met folks and Army and so on and so forth. Yeah, certainly one of the things I thought about mentioning but I kind of held my tongue along because it's not ready yet and you're well aware of it, the, the Global Synthetic Weather Radar, the OPC, you know, we should have our test still in December last I heard. So maybe, it, you know, by March, April, we'll have something to talk about on that. Well, and 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 if there is a there there, uh, you know, perhaps it could be uh, it could be uh, you know flagged for uh, Lee and and Bill in in this session as you know a, a at least a component of the next gen weather suite of of capabilities um, and, and or you know if there's an, again enough of a there there, especially with respect to the use of AI and machine learning in, in that particular area, you know, maybe, maybe it's a follow on topic, uh, you know, at a, at a, a future F Yeah, Sure. All right. Very good. Um, we've been going another hour. Um, how about we take another five minute uh, or 10 minute break till 10 till two Eastern and then see how far we get with the fall 2022 and 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 folks just as a lead into that you know i think i know where we're going to have it if if conditions permit i think at this stage setting a date would be useful but without heather reeves here to say whether the facility is available in that time frame i'm not precisely sure you know what it does so i i, I suppose at this point i'd be maybe interested in just having a brief discussion on what dates should we avoid in the in the uh, you know October November of 2022 timeframe, and then you know use what what we've talked about, and I think we've talked about some interesting things that that have a a winter weather type spin to where we can probably identify a a, a very timely winter weather session uh, that has a several components: the breaking the the uh, the the uh, Jay Vickers. Um, uh, sorry, Joe Vickers component um, and, and some of the other things that we have talked about already, uh, uh, including yours, Matthias, with uh, Scott Landolt. So, uh, so let's let's take a break until ten till two, and then we'll come back and wrap this thing up. All right, it's the home stretch, and uh, hopefully, we can give you a few uh, minutes of your day back. Uh, Randy Bass, you've had your hand up for, for 20 minutes now, and I know how hard that is. My arm gets tired having my hand up after about one minute. That's yeah, probably only closer to 15. <laughs> um, I was just going to say at the uh, at the end there, and uh, I don't know if Colonel Williams is still on, but uh, specifically, you know, I, I think there's a there's a play for them um, in the, uh, the low altitude weather. Um, so I know that even though this is, you know, probably um, a little weighted towards UAS, you know, th there's also a rotary component to low altitude, and they do a, you know, they do a lot of helicopter support. So there's there's certainly something there, um, and then they're kind of leading the way as far as aviation efficiency and reducing carbon emissions. You know, there's there's a lot of work on on that on the DoD side, so I think I think they should uh, um, or could consider having a play in that one as well. That that's all I wanted to say. I'll put my hand down now. Go ahead, Colonel Williams. Hey, thanks, Randy. Good points um, on that. Yeah, we'll we'll. Uh, I think not my area, but uh, I believe. We will have our climate plan for the DOD and the and the Air Force out specifically um, by the time this spring meeting rolls around too. So, yeah, all good points, Randy. Thanks. Uh, so, so Lieutenant Colonel Williams, do we? Um, th this may be a, a heck of an ask, but hey, what the heck? It's it's free. Um, it is should we should we consider putting a tbd dod rep on one or the other of of these sessions as somebody involved or is that something you'll have to uh, have some more discussions before knowing whether that can be done yeah well since everyone else has been so generous on here i'll say yeah you can you can throw us on there um at least as a placeholder for now maybe um 
you know, it doesn't matter to me what session, whatever you think's best, and uh, we'll certainly refine it as we get closer. Well, Randy, you you picked out two, um, and and yes, to your point, I think that the low altitude weather one is going to have a definite UAS slant to it by the time all is said and done, with applicability clearly to to rotary wing, um, but. I, I, my my reaction is, gee, I'm I'm intrigued, and, and you know, I, I wonder if if I could if I should add them here to the aviation efficiency and reducing carbon emissions piece. And, and there there was a question in there somewhere, and I think it was aimed at you, Randy. <laughs> uh, I guess. I guess I admit, I'm, not, I'm not understanding what you're asking there. I'm saying I'm saying give me guidance if if I've got to put DOD in one or the other of these and not both because I don't want to I don't want to assume. Well, let, let me go back to Lieutenant Colonel Williams. Can I put you in both and then we just modify as time goes on, or is or is there or would you rather be in one? And if it's one, I was looking for guidance on which one to put it put you in. And I'm, yeah, I'm saying I mean, you, you, Lieutenant you Colonel Williams. If, I, when I say you, I mean DOD, not necessarily you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, put us on both for now, and um, we'll get the right folks to, to represent just like we did with the last one. So, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so then, then um, probably for starters, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably ask for your involvement in our session shaping so that you can in turn hear enough of how this conversation goes to know, oh, I gotta go tap such and such and so and so, or we should do one, but not, not the other one or something like that. Is that okay? Yeah, sounds good. All right. Thank you, Randy. And and your biceps must be about the size of Rhode Island by now with your hand up that long. Okay. All right. Moving. You know what I better do? You know what you better do, Matt? You better hit the save button, dude, because stuff happens. Okay, um, as, I, as I said before we broke, the plan here is to, um, to take advantage of uh, Heather Reeves' uh, invitation and hold the fall 2022 FPA meeting in person in Norman at the National Severe Storms Laboratory slash OU. Um, and um, I, we did ask uh, much earlier on or verify that, that they do have native um, uh, in-person, I, I mean, virtual meeting capabilities in, in their room. So that won't be, shouldn't be a problem. Um, there are, there is some coordination that needs to be done uh, as far as specific days go. But once again, if we do this in person, it would probably be aimed at either a Tuesday, Wednesday, or a Wednesday, Thursday, sometime in October or November. So, so rather than, I think, try to identify which dates we should, it might be easier if we talked about what dates we shouldn't. So what my thought was, was let's spend a little bit of time talking about periods of time to avoid, if at all possible. Um, so, and, and so I'm flexible on my fishing trip, so we, I can work around you. <laughs> that was going to be one of my questions. RBNC fishing is flexible. That's good. NBAA is October 18th through the 20th in Orlando. Thank you, Joel. Cool. 
Any other uh, any other key dates out there? I think we have a holiday in October. Do we not? Isn't uh, yeah Columbus Day? So. Columbus Day is the tenth. Tenth. Yes, sir. My my memory tells me that for some organizations, federal organizations, getting travel money early in October is kind of a challenge. Well, that's a politically correct understatement. How early is early? My wild guess is that if it was after uh, the week of Columbus Day, which is the 10th, so somewhere after the 17th, it'd be easier. Randy, let me let me turn to you and see what your thoughts are on that. You know, I, I totally agree. The last that first that first week to 10 days of October is usually uh, it can it's doable, but it is a challenge. So, so it sounds like uh, like we're pointing to mid October or later than just just from that perspective, if nothing else. And then uh, mid October is NBAA, and that would not be a good uh, a good head to head. So it's either it's either well, uh, let me pull up a calendar. And I just looked up the ATCO annual conference and exposition is November six through nine. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, undoable, or I guess that's the word. Uh, if you wanted to do it like the, 11, the week of, of the week of Columbus Day, we just wouldn't necessarily travel on the 10th. So you could travel on the 11th and then do it, you know, Wednesday, Thursday or something like that. Okay, I, I hear you. So it, 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 you know, just just based on on you know, this conversation, it it sounds like it could be, the it could be the week of the tenth, uh, if it was the twelfth and the thirteenth, which is the Wednesday Thursday, um, it could, not nah, it couldn't, and then it couldn't be the following week because we'd go head to head with NBAA. Which I wouldn't want to do. It could be the week of the twenty fourth, either Tuesday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, Thursday, and it could be the 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 week of uh, of Halloween. So that'd be November first, second, or second, third. So that did we ever have an FPA meeting in person at Halloween? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, well, it, it it may have seemed like it a couple of times when we had elephants in the room that we were trying to exercise. God bless you, Nick Store, wherever you are. In uh, the second week of November, uh, the eighth is Election Day. Yeah, between ATCA and Election Day, that's probably ah. a week to avoid. I mean, it it seems to me like like we're 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 you know even though I said we weren't going to pick a date, we're we've narrowed down to three kind of time frames, um, and that would be the um, uh, 12, 13 October. Um, Let's see, 25, 26 October, 26, 27 October, uh, 0102 November, or 0203 November. Well, that at least gives me, I can, I can, I can send that Heather's way and say, you know, we, we've, we're not... We're not hard over on any one of these, but but for you know for reasons of 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 fiscal year and holidays and 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 competing conferences, it seems to be these five pairs of dates. Which could you support, and then see what she says at that point? You good with that, Matthias? Sounds like a plan. All right. Do we want to have a backup in our hip pocket 
for a location in case NSSL falls through. We could look at Boulder. I like Boulder. I'm 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 fond of Boulder. It's too expensive, but other than that, it's great. Any other uh, any other ideas about uh, alternatives in case uh, Nissel is not available? How about Alpa, Mark, Faneuf? I think he had to drop off. Yeah, I think Mark yeah. had to drop off. In the, in the past, we were co-located with uh, NBAA. Is that completely gone now? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I suppose they'd be happy to have us if we pay for the room. Disregard them. <laughs> you know, Alpha would mean a, a, a return to DC, and there's nothing wrong with a return to DC by by any means. <laughs> My stretch of the imagination, but you know, I, 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 my, my thinking here is that if we're going to do this in person, we try to reserve the the spring for DC and the fall for elsewhere. Hey, Matt. Yes, sir. Um, a, a year or two ago, we were trying to set up a uh, a convective weather uh, workshop for a couple of days, and at the time, Warren Qualley offered up the uh, facility, uh, the Southwest facility in Dallas. Um, obviously, he's not there anymore, but man, you know, that, that could be a consideration with to see if Rick Curtis might be able to do something. Yeah, and I still know a few people at Delta that I could also ask in a in a pinch if uh, if 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 that became a thing. So, and it's interesting. Uh, um, Warren and I were chatting just last week. We hadn't talked in a long while, and uh, yeah, he's still got some connections going there at at Southwest, and he probably could help arrange um, something like that. And and if that didn't work, uh, you know, my call, our colleague Dave Strand still has some American connections that we could probably tug on a little bit if need be. So, um, what about the Aviation Weather Center? Um, another good one. Do they have a room big enough potentially for 100 people? I, I just don't know. They have <clears throat> Central Region right there has an auditorium. Um, that could be utilized, so they do have the space. And if you'd like me to ask, I can ask if they'd be interested. If you don't mind, Brian, just to just to you know to uh, to to you know have another uh, another alternative. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You know, if we did that. It's just me thinking out loud. If we did that, we should probably um, have a, um, um, a an ad hoc aviation weather test bed session while we're there. I, I would imagine they would accommodate that. Well, you know, I'd, it'd be good considering that, you know, uh, we're in the aviation weather. They're the NOAA Aviation Weather Center. We yep. go along well. So one of the things that, you know, usually they compete with is that they have their summer experiments. Um, but they've become less focused on quote unquote summer. As they try to expand out and actually show interest in some of the other aviation hazards. Um, so I could get what their data are for that, but at the same time, I'm sure they would be happy to put on a demonstration for anybody who comes for FPA too. 
Well, and, and, and Brian, I wasn't thinking demonstration. I was thinking literally, hey, okay. you're going to have a bunch of Mets there uh -huh. across the aviation spectrum, inside and outside. You know, right. are, are there any things that, that you'd like Mets to look at and, and interact with? And, and I know it's off schedule, but here we all are. Take <laughs> advantage of us. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, see if I can't schedule a meeting with uh, Josh Sheck there. And see if that would be something they'd be interested in. And, and, um, and when you when you when you have that conversation, uh, so so if you will position it like this, you know we, we think Nissel's going to host us, but stuff happens, and so mm -hmm. we're looking for alternatives, not only for 2022, but we're looking for 2023 and 2024, and uh -huh. maybe we get some things lined up then going forward. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Brian, this is Dave up in Alaska. I, I, I think it's a good idea. Um, you know, one of the things I'm thinking of, especially from their perspective, is is they they have a, a fairly recently renovated facility that I think they would love to do a tour on as well. So the timing for next fall actually isn't that bad. Um, no, it's, you know, it's assuming, not. Assuming from a COVID perspective that we open up, which, you know, knock on wood, we're there. <laughs> but, yeah, let me let me have that conversation because um, I have seen the renovated facility and it does look very nice. Yep. Um, I think uh -huh. for for accommodating the uh, the the larger FPA, we would use their auditorium there in Central Region. Yep. Um, but it's just on the other side of the wall. That, that oh, okay. Like a great idea. And um, that was my question. Central Region and AWC share that that overall building yep. there. Got yeah, it. they they do. They're all in the same building, but there's a wall because AWC being a secure facility, um, there you know you scan your badge to get through the locked door into the operational center. Um, but it, you know other groups have done it in the past. Um, I know some of the you know, like they've done some international meetings there, accommodated like MOG meetings or those type of things. Okay. Um. Yep. I, I would recommend uh, in that same email, if you know Brian Hirsch. I do. From, from Central Region to include him as well. Yeah, I will I will start with Josh because he would be the one to say, well, yeah, you know, if we can make it a priority, we could double an experiment time at the same time mm -hmm. um, with with a lot of interested FPA people coming into town. Now, yeah. And I'm sorry, Brian. I made a statement earlier. I want to I want to modify somewhat. There's going to be a lot of Mets attending, but there's also a lot of aviation weather users, non Mets, exactly. and that's equally it, important. Yeah. Um, on, on the flip side to this, if if we were to wait till 23 for this, um, Kansas City will have a nice new terminal open at the airport to accommodate everybody traveling in. <laughs> So right now we're yeah, going to fly to St. Louis and commute. <laughs> you could if you wanted to. E even Omaha is a short drive up the road. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I think I've captured all that. And by the way, Brian, I I, I moved AWC from last on the list to to uh, up near the front of the list. Um, uh, and again, I think it's it, it that would be a good thing. Frankly, it'd be a great thing if we could get, you know, uh, several years of, of at least on paper scheduled locations that, that then takes some of the pressure off of us, Matthias, on, OK, now where do we go and, and what do we do? And, and so that, that would be a good thing. Not that there's any pressure on us, but uh, it would be a good thing. All right. Uh, thank you all for that. Uh, last item on my agenda is to to at least on a on a, a tentative basis, fill in some topics for the fall 2022 meeting agenda. So I'll shut up there and just listen to what you all have to say. Oops, this shouldn't be here. I think you set the tone already before the break that a wintry topic would be uh, timely also as it leads up to the next winter season and talking about various aspects of winter from surface observations of precip, mixed precip, etc., to the updates on the talpa, uh, the 
the breaking action information that we talked about. There's various elements that we could line up to make this a nice, a nice topic. I agree. Also, the airport runway cleaning, etc. Uh, Joe Vickers, have you left? Probably. Yeah, was it was it Arba? I I I remember that from his. Well, I can go and look. <laughs> yeah. Uh, While you look, Bruce, you had a have a comment. Your hands up. Yeah, but uh, mine is is on another another oh. topic and and not this one. Okay. Put an et cetera on that. So, so yes, I think we could fill up easily a half day long session with a winter weather topics of some sort without getting too specific at this point in time. With that having been said, is there is there anyone who uh, who with whom that resonates enough to to volunteer to lead or participate in said session? Well, you and I, Matt, don't need to put our names down necessarily because we will be engaged in it. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> I just, I mean, we we've got a we've got a small group left here now, and if there was anybody who who said, "Oh yeah, I want to I want to help shape that session," then then uh, the, the, I, well, so here's what I think. I think we can safely put Joe Vickers' name down here, although although that's for a portion of it, as as opposed to the whole session. Right, and then there is maybe Josh uh, Paros right. might help because he has in the past uh, with with uh, the airport centric aspects of it. Then I could see Scott Landolt from an uh, observation perspective, maybe slash with a FA uh, rep there. I don't know if. If Vic Pacetti will be part of that, or Stephanie DeVito. So I know that Stephanie is involved uh, very much in the uh, the winter weather special weather action team of the FAA's weather COI. She's the lead. So um, th this would this would absolutely be an opportunity for her to uh, to you know to share some of the things they are looking at. They're concerned about. And also, she could be in both send and receive mode, and I think it'd be very helpful for her. As a matter of fact, again, I'm I'm not authorized to do this, but I'm going to actually put her up front, and um, and um, let her know that uh, that that she has a a task at hand. Matt and Matthias, I was uh, going to suggest Stephanie, not volunteer her, but just suggest, and maybe do an update on ice school if that's. Uh, uh, still in process, or if there's a second iteration of the iSchool program, I think Randy. There's both. Probably they're knows that. they're doing uh, analysis of the data sets collected, and they are also looking at collecting additional data sets. And and Randy, please chime in if if you have more information there. Okay. No, not. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a good topic, and and all the only the only concern I would have is um, not so much from a from a Taywin aspect, but um, they're trying to work out some dates and times for the uh, high ice water content uh, flight campaign, and it's possible that it could be in the fall of next year. And if that's happening, then she's not she's going to be you know, completely out of pocket. Is that right now, Matthias? Yes, and then above as well. Yeah. And who normally supports Josh um, on on some of the stuff that he does from your shop? You, you mean me, Seth Linden? 
was Seth, working. Seth, 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 yeah, that, that was the other name I couldn't, yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't think of. Um, okay. Well, we've got we've got some some you know some folks identified, and we can certainly engage and see if 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 Josh or Stephanie would be interested in or or Scott, heck, I don't know, would be interested in in you know kind of being the prime on this and helping to shape this session. Okay, very good. And Tom, we got you signed up again for to do what you do. So so. Uh, all we have to figure out is what it is that you're going to do. And whether or not I'm still around. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I know where you are. You're in Venice. I am. It's wonderful. Shorts <laughs> and T-shirts sitting out on the lanai. <laughs> OK. All right. Bruce, you said uh, you had uh, you had some input on uh, on on one of these other sessions. Yeah, I was. Uh... Just just imagine this. Don Ike gets up and presents the NTSB statistics on weather related accidents and the NTSB priorities for improving those statistics. And then he recruits uh, people in the community that he feels uh, can make a major contribution or are making a major contribution to trying to reduce those uh, accident numbers. And so uh, make the whole session basically an NTSB safety, weather safety focused, uh, how are we going to get better uh, kind of session. Now, would that be better suited for a spring meeting where we are in DC or can they travel and participate if that's a remote location? Yeah, it, it might work better in DC because he he may have people in DC that he wants to include that would be hard to get to Oklahoma City. So you could probably put that idea into the um, into the holding pen for um, for the next iteration. Or Bruce, you could suggest a topic on the FPA website and put it in the hopper that way. Yeah, and that way it sticks in there forever. Does it now? <laughs> Okay. Um, any other uh, any other ideas uh, from the uh, from the remaining gang that's here? <clears throat> so you know, just a question. The um, uh, I had heard a while back that uh, IKEA was going to mandate or come out with the fact that. All aviation products worldwide are going to be fully automated. I, I don't know if that's still being implemented, but it'd be interesting to discuss on you know the continuing automation of all the products that uh, uh, aviators use. You know, is there any difference in quality? Are they getting better? You know, that kind of stuff. Hey, um, and, and I'm, I'm just not familiar, Ralph, so I'm going to ask really ignorant questions. The, the mandate is that all all products will be automated. Does that does that imply that that um, that there are no humans in that loop at all? That's the understanding I had. As you know, uh, ICAO pays major World Weather Center money to produce a global you know, aviation weather products. And, uh, you know, the last I discussion I had, which is now a couple of years, uh, was that, you know, in order to contain costs, uh, they were just going to go with total automation. Ralph, you're talking weather products? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard that. Well, you know, the, uh, 
the uh, it may not apply here in the U.S. because uh, Aviation Weather Center is funded by the federal government, but NOAA does put out products uh, for its responsibilities across the globe. So it'd just be interesting to know if, if there if anything has changed on that or. And I know there's more and more automation being used in TAP production, hazard production, and so forth. Okay. You know, Matt, I know you talked about the low altitude uh, weather, you know, for the spring. And is that something we want to do since you just did the TIM? And, you know, overwhelmingly, I think you got support for doing it. I, I think the timing in the fall meeting is worthy. Ralph, isn't ASTM the the timeline for like the first round of stand, weather standards? Isn't that due next fall? Uh, yes, it is. I think November time frame. So I'm thinking that's uh, it's a timely subject still. There'll probably be a lot a lot of things to to dis, dis, the discuss. Would that be a primary or a secondary topic or uh, where how much time do you think would be needed for for that in terms of adding additional information over what is being discussed at the spring meeting already? I don't know. Well, and it probably wouldn't take much time. Uh, so far, my experience has been is that uh, the longest amount of time is the debate that goes along with the subject. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I, I'm, you know, these ones that that are interesting, but we we need more information. I'm just gonna park down here in the uh, in the notes section of this slide. So this would be Kevin from your perspective and an update to the the uh, low altitude weather session spring 2022. That could be something that you know that if it's a, you know if it's a a single topic. Hey, here's here's what's here's what ASTM is going to be pushing out in the next two weeks. Um, you know, maybe that could be one of the Tom Ryan, uh, you know, topics review sessions that 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 gets included. In. A couple of things from my side. One is a heads up that we will be sending out a quick survey related to the fall uh, meeting we had. And one question in there is, what are the things that you would like to see follow up from from the fall meeting? And there could be potential topics in there surfacing through that survey too that mm -hmm. might come into play for the fall meeting agenda. The other thing I want to throw out is, and that kind of, kind of surfaces at different venues, and it came up uh, at the fall meeting too, the whole aspects of renewal of products and retirement of products and maybe the whole uh, research to operations, you know, challenges there. Is this a discussion topic that would help, you know, find or make progress on and finding solutions? Is that something that would be of interest for an FPA meeting? Say some more about that, Matthias. I'm 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 not necessarily twigging to where you're going. Okay. Uh, let's see. With the renewal, we have a a whole bunch of products that are being generated. Some may be outdated, but it takes quite a bit of effort to retire products uh, to get them out of of the operational suite. And similarly, it takes quite some effort to get 
new things into operations and especially if you go across agency or organizational boundaries there is all sorts of challenges that are associated with that of funding streams of timelines uh, and and this is not just let's say from the faa to weather service it could also be to the private sector etc so i think there would be a fair amount of meat that could be uh, brought to bear Sounds the like research. you're describing my day, Matthias. <laughs> the, uh, so interesting because you know we are uh, working with internal FAA and, and working with the Weather Service uh, to retire the Oakland area forecast. The timing of that is is slated for March of 2023, at least for the Gulf and the Caribbean, and. We've submitted a, a document change proposal to retire the CONUS air mets, which the ATO is supporting. <clears throat> it's going to take time. Uh, we had uh, put out a date, February 2023. That that's not going to happen. But yeah, I mean, we did brief the FPA. Uh, back what 2017 when we retired the CONUS area forecast and I'll tell you it's a, it's a struggle but uh, yeah no we could definitely rally uh, a, a subject around that so I'm, I'm, I'm just making up stuff as I go but I've written down key aspects of research to operations and operations to retirement Is there enough of a there there to uh, to fill up a, a half a day? And is it something that that that, um, you know, folks would like to see as soon as the fall of 2022? I don't know if uh, this I is think, I don't know if it's a half a day, but it's definitely a good subject, I think. You know, based on our plan to address the convective suite of products, uh, that should be well on its way. Um, and and so that that would fit into this uh, subject or topic, maybe. I, I was going to add in, Matt, I know in 22 and 23, there is a, a great convergence of some of NCAR's suite of products uh, going into new NOAA models. Um, and they are all tunneling through the R2O process at this moment, and it's a pretty big challenge. One of the things that has occurred to me as we've been as we've been messing around here is that, you know, we we have a couple of of short, we have two short topics that we pretty much, you know, are are have intentions of of having at each of these of these meetings at, at which point we have a a primary topic and a secondary topic but uh, as as went along with the conversation we were having with Lee Jang earlier today you know who said well I'm not sure that that you know this next gen weather topic that I have here is a is a primary or a secondary we were talking about you know beefing up that that um uh, efficiency and and emissions topic, you know, maybe it's a maybe in one of the days where there isn't a you know a true primary and secondary, there's just two primary. So maybe it's a two hours a split, be you know, a two hours each among two topics as opposed to one being three and one being one. H heck, we we can we can make we can make this day a four hour topic if that's what it if that's what it takes. But I, I'm gonna, if it's okay with you, um, and and I'm looking to Matthias and to uh, to Kevin uh, and Brian, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up here like this for now, and you know we're it's a year away, so it's not like we're committing to anything. But um, are there any are there any folks who would uh, who would could see themselves uh, volunteering for this particular session? Kevin. Hey, Matt, this is Randy. Um, timely enough, I got an email last week, maybe two weeks ago, um, from NOAA 
they are doing a review of the Unified Forecast Service uh, R2O process. And so they've sent, they've sent their documents out for review and I'm currently doing them. And there's some good things in there and there's some things that you know, need to be discussed. But uh, um, yeah, I definitely believe this is a good topic. Um, you can even put me down as, as somebody on this one. Um, I would also recommend that we definitely get a NOAA person, preferably from NSAP, you know, like a, a Jason Levitt or you know, somebody like that to uh, talk about this. And I can help Brandy, but only if Marilyn volunteers me. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn, is that okay? <laughs> I'm happy to volunteer you for anything, Kevin. <laughs> you know, the, the, the overarching thing here is that everybody works for Bill, so it doesn't make any difference. And, and since Jason was the one who uh, submitted my name for this review, I can submit his name for this one. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be nice. Work for Bill, we wish we worked for Bill. <laughs> It would be good to have a private sector rep there too, because I think that may be an, uh, a different a possible outlet that is certainly being kicked around. Yeah, that's a good point. Who did you have in mind, Matthias, when you said private sector rep? Could be different things. It could be, you know, uh, Kevin Petty, it could be a John Williams, it could be, uh, there are many folks in different, you know, organizations out there. I would just say a private sector rep at this. Gary, Gary Pagodner probably has some. Well, Let's volunteer Birchoff for that. <laughs> you sighed, Matthias. <laughs> Should have turned off my camera first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I those are those are those are three very good names and and none of them are are shy and bashful so that would be a we'll certainly get feedback from them that's a that's a that's a, that's a good choice um okay what else i'm gonna i'm gonna remove you from here matthias it seems to have bubbled its way up into the into the agenda Earlier, we talked about the 5G, if that requires uh, another revisit. I don't know whether Tom Ryan, that would be another revisit on the ongoing topics and maybe have only one or two or three in there, or if it's going to be a primary or a secondary topic. But then again, maybe the fall meeting might not be as good as a spring meeting uh, with the focus in DC on that. I agree with your last statement, Matthias. The uh, fall meeting, I think, will be a little late for what seems to be coming down the pike. So we may want to think of that, Tom, then when we're doing the, you know, trying to uh, identify for the this upcoming spring meeting. Uh, maybe that's one of them. Maybe, yes. you know, maybe that's the one. You know, who knows? We, we, again, we can be flexible. Very good. So um, I would, at the at the risk of, of auto assigning to myself some work here, which I don't necessarily want to do. Bye, Randy. Um, I, I would like to throw out the notion of um, of forecast uncertainty, probabilistic weather, and and aviation aviation decision making. I, I think that is just such a ripe area for conversation and discussion. Uh, again, the fall meeting may not be the right place for it simply because of where it is and who would or wouldn't be there. Although if we have, you know, virtual attendance and we're in the central time zone, you know, that's that that maybe makes it more um, more doable for everybody. But I, I, I just think there's that's such a key problem that that we've done little but pay lip service to at this point. I second that. 
Well, let me let me add on a third, you know, and then I think the real challenge here is, you know, for us as human beings to deal with probability forecasts is a challenge. But with machine learning and machine machine and machine transfer of data, that's where that can really play. And and I think we haven't explored that enough. I, I think uh, by incorporating weather information into a C2 architecture, you can really leverage the probability forecast. Tell me what a C2 architecture means, please, Ralph. Command and control. Thank you. I just, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I think you've got to narrow this down, guys. Though. There's so many areas when you're talking this that just putting that down, I don't think it's enough. You know, I had a talk with Ralph, you know, when we were talking about this for applying as you're using it for advancing automation. You know, there's also weather quality, how you assess how good the source is. And that kind of ties to this. Are you talking spreads? You know, if you have a different range, is that what you mean by uncertainty? Are you using the classic percentile? Are you giving averages versus what are the three most likely scenarios and things like that? Because as you feed automation and it's getting more and more as you're moving up those levels of automation, that sort of stuff is a different form of probabilistic than telling a pilot you have a 50% chance of incurring icing, which, you know, is that by time? So I think you've got to pick your topics here a lot more specific. I, I don't disagree uh, in the least with you, Gary. At this point, just having a, an overarching Uber topic there, you know, we'll we'll start whittling this down as we get into the session prep, for sure. And 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 I think your I think your comments are spot on. Uh, you know, this could be a this could be a, a day all by itself, or a couple of days all by itself, not just a a you know three or four hour session. For sure. Hey, Matt, I put my hand up. Uh, to kind of add on to Gary's comment, what about, is there anybody out there that already incorporates it into their operational flow on the aviation side? And how do they use it? Um, that that yes, question is always- I think you need to pick stuff like that so that we actually accomplish, because otherwise I could see where this is going to be one of those where it's a bunch of talk and you don't go anywhere. I think you need- exactly. Like, we can, like Brian's bringing up where you're actually trying to head to some specific goal. Because otherwise, yeah, we can talk three days on this, but not do anything except talk. That's kind of, I think what Brian brings up is sort of what I was saying is you get you got to pick a couple of directional, what, what we're trying to fix here or solve or who's the issue. You know, are you trying to say probabilistic specific for automation? Are you saying it for decision making and something that's very specific? where we have an end goal that hopefully we can accomplish something and either support a standard where there's still a lot of those need to be written in this area. There's a lot of areas where this has just not been incorporated. Yep, yeah, I don't I don't disagree again with any of that from, from you, Gary, or from you, Brian. Uh, again, I just think that th this overall area is, is ripe for discussion and conversation. And to your point, Gary, more than just conversation, you know, uh, you know, let let's narrow it down. Let's get a let let's try to answer a question uh, and and be able to say something specific about it once we're done with the conversation. So, Gary, does that mean that you you could see yourself being involved in this? I could be involved. I'm trying to get some projects in this area. The problem is I do not want to be anywhere near a lead because it is very meteorological. So. Though I have some research I am trying to do um, and met with actually Don Birchoff and Ralph to talk about the other day, and I'm still trying to get some of this approved. Um, and if I can get it going, I think I could have some really interesting things by the fall if I can get an approval. But I am, this is so heavy meteorological that it'd be one of the presenters more than a lead. So I'm happy to have my name on this, but there better be somebody in big print and mine in a littler print. <laughs> I'll put a comma so, in front of your name. Type so, in a uh, little, little text. You know, this is not as heavily meteorological as you would think. The meteorology is already there. The models are there. You know, we're running ensembles with 200 members. What we need is a great computer guy, a software guy that takes the information we already have and incorporates it into the C2 structure with the right algorithms. Hey Brian Pettigrew, is this a, is this something you could see yourself um, spearheading? Uh, 
Well, how about sure a Mike I Robinson? Uh, well, yeah. well, well, well. <laughs> Put more on his plate. Brian, yeah. it's only 175 percent over yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead and put me down there, and I'll I'll see what I can accomplish in the next six months to a year on this. Well, again, this is this is a this is a year away. You know, mm -hmm. we're not really going to begin talking about this until after the spring. 2022 planning meeting when we decide, yay, verily, we're going to do this, and, and only then does it kick in. So, so th these these are very the cement won't dry here for a long time. Okay, well, I'm I'm okay with that then. Ralph, is this something that you could see yourself uh, uh, getting uh, into? Well, you can put my name down, but uh, you know there is a possibility I could be living on Venice Beach by then. But um. <laughs> Tom, Tom Ryan has a room for rent. Is that it? But uh, yeah, I Tom think Matt. this is this is the future of our business set. I mean, no, here's the problem: we need to all understand we continuously want to improve weather information. But if we don't improve in how we present it to the operational users, then our improvements aren't being realized. That's why this is such a big deal. And that's the what Ralph just said is what I think you need to put here. If you caught that on tape, I think that is the a, a direction where I believe needs help. I, and I don't even know that I could rephrase what he just said. It's it's more than I I put down presentation because I think that was kind of close to what what Ralph was saying. But but you know even even that piece, it's not just about presentation. It's about how it's incorporated algorithmically into the decision making process, which is non meteorological, and how that is then presented. Right. To decision how you represent it and present it. It's like it's how it's represented or how it's defined or described and presented or something like that. What parameters are actually used and then the presentation of those parameters. Yeah. Well, uh, and again, I, I think hopefully, uh, hopefully there are young enough people in this call that six months from now you'll remember this conversation, and understand what these words mean. But I, I think we're, I think we got enough words here that we can probably, um, you know, back out of this uh, sort of. Here's what we had in mind when we were talking about this. Um, and I, and frankly, I don't want to lead, but I'd very much like to be involved in this too. So if you don't mind, I'm going to stick my name down there. Well, you will be involved one way or another, man. I know, I know, but I mean involved as something besides, yeah, this role. Yeah. yeah th this is this is this to me is so very interesting and so so very needed. Jim Evans, Lord Almighty, I didn't know you were still alive. Well, I, you know, I, I come out of, I rise from the dead and I walk amongst the living. <laughs> Very strange experience. I, uh, <laughs> to show you how far I, I fall, I was even interacting with, I've been interacting several days with John McCarthy. So if you want, you want to get into voices from the past, yeah. that's, where, that's where I have been. How's John doing, Jim? Well, he, he's had a bunch of, of challenges, but he's, he's, He's he's back uh, trying to pick up the pieces of of what happened in the world of of getting making TDW of um, achieving an operationally successful microburst detection system, and uh, he's he's trying to recall all, a, a topic very germane to F fall, which was talk who was talking to the pilots and the airlines to make sure that the stuff actually was going to get used. Yeah. But uh, that that actually um yeah, research to operations, yeah, there were where there's a paper that 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 a bunch of the NCAR people and myself are writing on on, on the experience with the uh, microburst in that respect. That'll be that'll be uh that'll be something that, that we aviation weather we need will want to pick a pick up a copy of and read. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, the plan is I think it's going to come out in BAMs sometime, but where the details are, shall we say, you know, going on. Um, I'm, I'm just sitting here looking at your topics. Um, well, I mean, I, I think <laughs> topic three is dear to my heart. Actually, topic one has an issue too, but that's topic three and topic one. I guess we got the lead to the group for number three. <laughs> you heard them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. The um, this is a topic that that you know. I think too often what's happened is we put out a probabilistic product and then no, but, but the, the truth of the matter is in many of these cases, what's got to happen is somebody has got to put in some type of traffic management initiative and we meet, need a set of numbers for capacity broadly defined. You know, in other words, capacity, how many arrivals an hour are you going to let go to the airport? Or how many hours are you going to let some, say, unidirectional flow route go through an en route uh, structure called an FCA? Mm -hmm. And what <sighs> presentation, wait, how, how do you expect these people are going to make a decision? They don't have college degrees in statistics. Okay. Or electrical engineering. Yes, you're exactly right. Okay. And, and I mean, and shame on us. I'm going to say Lincoln Lab has built, built some products of that type and we didn't address it. Okay. And I, I think that's one of the real points is, is how to make these things useful to, to coming up with a tangible decision. And, you know, I mean, I, somebody sits and I have five, you know, AI with 40 layers and everything else running around, and out comes a probabilistic model, and now what? Yep. Now what? So, Jim, would you like to be added to the list of luminaries that are planning on working on this fall of 2022 yeah, Session? I, you know, if I, you know, still alive, yes, I, I, I would. I, I have, obviously, I have a certain amount of passion on the topic. That's good. Good. So uh, I want to circle us back. I, I mean, we've, we've just about got an agenda tentative uh, filled out here. Um, we do have uh, um, one more slot with nothing in it right now, which I'm not at all worried about because, again, we're a year away. But is there and, and we've parked a couple of of uh, uh, of ideas down here in the notes side that uh, that perhaps, um, you know, will will um, morph into something. Uh, that could go in this slot, but but let, let me go back out to the 15 diehards that remain. Is there is there a, is there an, a, another topic that we should consider for this slot right here? What's what slot is this? Just this space right here on okay. uh, on yeah. It's these are just arbitrary days and arbitrary times. It's basically just a slot at this point. Oh. And, and frankly, I'm I'm I don't know about you, Matthias. I'm perfectly happy leaving this right where it is right now because we're basically now a a session ahead of our I mean a an FPA meeting ahead of where we usually are at this sta stage of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's some place. Where can one find some place? Uh, kind of what you have planned for spring. Oh, we uh, we uh, the the place is right here. Okay. And and this will all be uh, sent out um, and part of the planning meeting notes when they're put together on the uh, on the FPA uh, website. Okay. We have okay. a hand up, Mike. 
I'm, uh, uh, I'm sorry, who? Oh, the hand went down. I think Jay was uh, having the hand up. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was accidental. Ah, okay. <laughs> but Jay, I, I, I must say, I'm really, really tickled to see you here. And I'm probably the only person on this call who knows why I'm tickled to see you here. And I'm glad you are. <laughs> and you need to talk, you're going to need to talk with Lieutenant Colonel Williams after the uh, after the session because you may end up getting voluntold <laughs> to to help out with some things. I will track them down. Roger. You know, Matthias, I, I, I'm 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 inclined to say we got enough not only to be dangerous but to do what we need to do for the next almost 12 months. So I'm 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 very happy where we are right now. How about you? I think so too. Yes, we have a pretty good idea for the spring. We have uh, some significant ideas for the fall, and uh, I think we could adjourn and call it a planning meeting. I concur. So let me let me open it back up to uh, again the the diehard fifteen or whatever we're left to. Any any closing comments? Did did we just absolutely whiff on stuff that that uh, you know that we're just not listening well enough, or do we have enough here to 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 call her a day and give you uh, an hour and change back? Real quick, what is the date you guys are going to put for the spring for like your straw man or first milestone of meetings and prep? Because I know you guys have tried to get some structure of regular meetings to see that briefings are being prepared. What's the first wicket or date for that? Uh, stand by. I think I can tell you a, an exact date. Just a second. So that I don't misspeak too horribly. Whoops. Gone too far now, Pat. Sorry, I got click happy and <laughs> All right, today is October twentieth. Let's see, Matthias, you and I are meeting next Monday, the 25th, correct? That is correct, yes. So, it, uh, Gary, it could be as early as Monday, November the 1st. Or the 15th. Or the 15th if we decide to take a week off. Okay, saying the 15th, let's go with that. What is that wicket? What do you, what are you guys going to be asking or hoping? Is it just names at that point? Is that the first wicket? So on the 15th, we would start a series of every two weeks check-ins with the session leads and or key session participants. And, and, you know, we would probably in that first meeting you know, talk about here's what we think you're doing, and you know, here's the name we've given it, and and we 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 clearly are going to need to, you know, to to further define and refine what it is that we're going to do, and who's going to who's who are the participants that that you'll be working with, and and you know who's key and who needs to be at every one of these meetings, and who should be optional. I mean, you know, that sort of stuff, and then. Then every two weeks we'll be saying, "Hey, how you doing?" and and or, "How you doing?" and and then uh, you know, uh, looking for progress, looking for updates, you know, okay. seeing where you're going, how the session is being shaped, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Just wanted an idea. Yep. You left something important out, Matt. What did I leave uh, out, Matthias? Are you still okay running with this? <laughs> Was that a question for me or Gary? No, as part of what we would do when we start these biweekly meetings, first is to make sure that they are still okay for what yes. they signed up for. 
Yeah, yeah, precisely. No, I mean, I just know looking at these names, we got a lot of varied expertise that it's going to probably just take a little while to get names and scope and what each person wants. Um, yeah, oh, absolutely. There's a, there's a broad range of knowledge in that in these names. Yeah. And and Gary, you know, um, you know, our our experience over the last couple of FPAWs, you know, and 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 doing this is that you know, at, at first, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's just, and I'm going to pick the first names in the list ju just for convenience for you. Maybe it's, it's Ralph Stoffler and Tom Ryan and Lee Jang and Gary Picodner and Joel Siegel and Matthias and I, and we start talking about, you know, who and what, uh, and, you know, and, and then, then maybe you say, Hey, I really need, and I'm making this up. I really need, uh, Daniel Fuca and Nan Nancy Mendonca to, to join me on this because they're going to be key in in shaping this. And we say, okay, we'll add them to the invite list. And you know, and then then it, it it evolves and it morphs. And you know, some weeks it's just one of you that can attend, and some weeks all three of you attend, and and that's okay too, as long as there's communication amongst yourselves in between time. And and um, it 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 just seems to work very reasonably well. No, I don't think we have any problem. Just wanted to kind of know. So whenever we set up a meeting, we got till the 15th. That should work uh, yep. to get people together and get some organization as a group on what we want to do. I, I think that's a I think it's a great plan between now and the 15th of November to, you know, to look at your group to, you know, to if you haven't heard back from Joel or Ralph about their reach outs within booze and Collins, you know, reach out to them, maybe Lieutenant Colonel Williams for Hey, do you have somebody in the DOD side that that uh, you know you you would like to uh, see attached to this effort? And and um, then on the fifteenth, we we got something to start with at that point. Assuming, of course, that you're still you answer the question that Matthias just asked in the affirmative. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Very good. Anybody else? Any last words? If not, I will thank you for your participation, for your input. This was great. I could not have hoped for it to have worked out better, me personally speaking now. And, um, and uh, we will um, catch back up with many of you on or around November the 15th, if not before. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.